I tell you, Buck, this is the life, my friend. It's been a tough week in college football. Doug, it has been. I bet you a lot of college coaches want to be where we are right now. Hey, I was just sweating it out watching some of those games, especially Urban Meyer. What happened to the Gators at home? I guess it's not a back-to-back -back national title for the Gators and, and the Longhorns of Texas. Doctor, Oklahoma losing at Colorado? Please. The Buffaloes are for real this year, Doug. They are. Oh. That was They just rumbled up and down the field in South Florida. In my mind, that wasn't that big an upset after watching that game. No, Wally Burnham, the defensive coordinator, he has the book. He's written a book on how to stop West Virginia. He knows how to do it. Uh, what about our game tomorrow? South Florida and now Florida Atlantic. Oh, yeah, that's right. We got. I thought we were sitting here all weekend. Well, we got to go to work oh, eventually. Oh, South okay. Florida's been working all year. Yeah, they have all been. Right. But what about that defense for South Florida? That'll wake you up. It will. Mr. Sure. Selvey, a defensive end, leading the country in sacks, nine. Wow. One of the best first steps in college football. I'm saying unbelievable talent. He is leading the nation in sacks and tackles for loss. Love watching that tape. Matt Grothy, a quarterback. He's a pretty mobile guy. He makes things happen. He's a competitor. Yeah. Knows how to win and just a tough guy. Lakeland, Florida kid. You know, knows how to play. Hey, Florida Atlantic's got a good quarterback. Rusty Smith, big 6'5 guy. He throws a little bit like Phillip Rivers. Remember him? Yeah. yeah. And a strong arm. I think he's it's surprising how strong his arm is just because he has that funny release. But he's effective. How about if we walk down the beach? I don't think anybody would know who Tavius Polo is. But Marco, we know. You know Marco Polo? Marco you know Polo. Why? You know why? He's got seven interceptions on the year. You know, most times defensive backs say bingo. But I'm sure he says Marco, and then the defensive backs say Polo. <laughs> And he's going for seven interceptions on the year, wow. not one in high school. Some people don't have seven for a career. Yeah. He has seven in four games. He's a talented kid. I think we got ourselves a ball game. I think you're right, Doug. When do we have to go over there, by the way? Uh, it's tomorrow. Oh, so we can just relax? <laughs> yeah, we can relax. College football, this is the life, my friend. This is the life. It is a festive atmosphere in Fort Lauderdale for South Florida fans. This is like spring break in October for Florida Atlantic, the biggest crowd in their history expected today. It's USF, number six in the country, against Howard Schnellenberger's Owls, two of Division I's new kids on the block, presented by Allstate. This is the life. It's coming up next on ESPNU. This is the life that was yesterday. Of course, uh, that's one way to prepare for a game. Our surf report, the buck stops here. Fast track programs, college football. This is the life. I can attest to that. And a national championship experience. They've never seen anything like it at Florida Atlantic. In fact, Lockhart Stadium, where they play most of their home games, seats just over 20,000. The biggest crowd in FAU history today, most of them wearing green and gold for the South Florida Bulls. Welcome to South Florida, everybody. Doug Bell, Charles Arbuckle, Melissa Knowles, and thousands of enthusiastic fans. Chuck, this is fun. Hey, Doug, you got to feel the atmosphere. And these folks at FAU are so excited because not only do they have this stadium, but now in a few years, they'll have their own on-campus stadium. But you can see the sense of urgency and all the things that they have here. Down on the field, let's check in with Melissa Knowles. You know, guys, the undefeated South Florida Bulls have already upset Auburn and West Virginia this year to skyrocket to the number six team in the nation. Now, you think with that kind of success, there would be a lot of celebrating going on. But I had to talk with uh, defensive coordinator Wally Burnham, and he told me that he hasn't heard any talk about national rankings on the practice field or in the locker room. As a matter of fact, he says his team's attitude is to stay grounded no matter what the rankings are and to play whoever shows up on the other side of the, the, the sideline. And today, that team is Florida Atlantic, and uh, they look to be the upset team themselves. Guys? All right, Melissa, thank you. There's Howard Schnellenberger wearing that blue blazer, which is just a staple of his. And regardless of how hot the temperature, Coach Schnellenberger never takes it off. Yeah, Doug, and he is the guy that, you know, came over and wasn't sure how quickly they were going to turn this program around, and I think they're getting it a lot sooner than he even thought. 
They love him in South Florida, won the national championship at the University of Miami some 24 years ago, trying to build this FAU program into a powerhouse. And right now, FAU tied for first in the Sun Belt Conference with Troy. Well, the other thing about Coach Snellenberger, he coached also at, with the Miami Dolphins, so has a lot of experience in this area and knows a lot of the recruiting battles and everything else. So you can sense that's why this team has improved. They've been able to get good, talented players. His win three weeks ago against Minnesota at nearby Dolphin Stadium, he declared that the biggest win in the program's history. And he intimated if they win today, this will be the biggest win FAU football has ever had. South Florida won the coin toss, decided to defer to the second half. They'll kick off and give the football to FAU. Delbert Alvarado with the wind behind him, a stiff breeze about 18 miles per hour blowing to the west. If he had his back, this should go to the end zone. Right at the goal line, fumbled into the end zone, and here they come. Olo brings it out up around the 20 yard line. Check that, that's Chris Bartles. Yes, Shea makes the stop for South Florida and FAU on the attack. A team that likes to move the quarterback around, Buck, and show a lot of different motions and shifts. They're doing all sorts of stuff. Yeah, you'll see a lot of the old staples of the Miami offense when Jim Kelly was there, but also when Schnellenberger was at Louisville. They use the tight ends a lot. The tight end is a leading receiver, Jason Harmon, big number 88. So they throw the ball around, and the fullback also catches a lot of passes out of the backfield. Rusty Smith, big, six feet five, up to about 220 now. A Jacksonville kid, they went after hard in recruiting. They really wanted him, and they got him. A redshirt sophomore throws behind his receiver, Concherio Johnson. He was open, but he threw it behind him. He has that funny release, and sometimes it's hard to track it when you're a receiver. Let's look at the FAU offense. Nick Paris will watch him at center, a bit undersized, and he has his hands full with Richard Klaybert of South Florida. A big matchup, watch for that. In the backfield, Manley is a man. Carries the ball quite often. Concherio Johnson, he was the receiver in that first play. He is the go-to guy on the outside. Second and 10. The officials conferring now blew the whistle. A Big East officiating crew with South Florida on the road. Randy Smith is our referee. And they're setting the clock here at Lockhart Stadium. Ready to go. Smith has that funny throwing motion. Gary Nord, the offensive coordinator, said it looks a lot like Phillip Rivers a few years ago. And here he goes rolling out. Has his man, Johnson. Gains five yards. Trey Williams, one of the outstanding quarterbacks from South Florida, on the tackle. Look at this throwing motion that we're talking about with Rusty Smith. Just the arm slot is a lot lower. Watch him on the, he gets outside, almost gets knocked down. But look at it, it's even more apparent when he's in the drop back on the, but on a rollout. Never even turns those shoulders square, still able to fire it out. We were on the field before the game, and he does have a rifle. Yeah, he can throw the ball. He can throw it, he was throwing into the wind. But he doesn't cock it too much. That's what Coach Norv was saying, how he gets it out and boom. Again, problems with the clock here at Lockhart Stadium. They're used to the soccer time where you just keep running. <laughs> let's, keep, keep let's check the defense of South Florida. And Buck, you and I watched a lot of tape this week, and it is so much fun to watch these guys. They get after you. George Selvey leads the country in sacks, nine and a half. Klaybert, a monster inside. Ben Moffitt is the team captain, and what an inspirational leader he is for this unit. And the cornerbacks, Trey Williams, Mike Jenkins, we will see them in the NFL someday. Yeah, they'll play on Sundays, and those guys are very good at funneling everything in. Moffitt is a sideline to sideline kind of guy. So when you look at this defense, they're built with speed. And Wally Burnham talks about we turn up the grass, we burn the grass, I mean, we cut the grass. He does everything except manicures the lawn. He talks about the grass, but <laughs> these guys are so fast. And they play with such intensity, all of them, and that's what he likes. George Selby is the key person. And you're going to see a lot with Florida Atlantic making sure that they don't let him go free. They're going to use a tight end and a running back to make sure he doesn't have a free release onto the quarterback. Selby, six feet four, right around 250 pounds. He was a high school center. And they say that's one of the reasons he gets off so quick yes. because he knows exactly what the center's thinking and he anticipates that count having been a former center. And most teams he even knows now uses the center where he raises the head up once to identify the calls and the checks and then goes back down. And then when he goes down, he's able to look at the quarterback and kind of get a feel for when he can get off on the football. 
He has been a dominating presence for South Florida. Wally Burnham has been around a long, long time. The defensive coordinator spent many years at Florida State. And the other day on, in our conversation with him, he said, you know, this unit does compare with those great Florida State units that he had. We're talking about the best they had about 10 years ago. And, and that's what, what's impressive when you hear him talk about that, but they did it the right way with a lot of Florida kids, the same way Florida State has done. So they've gotten talent there at, at USF, and they know how to recruit the guys. And Florida Atlantic has looked at them as maybe the older brother in the development of the program. Let's talk more about Ben Moffitt. In fact, the buck stops right here. Well, you're going to see Ben Moffitt and what makes him so effective. Now, he's going to be right there. Big Beast and Ben. That's what the Big East is called this year. And watch his ability to see the quarterback and then come off of him. You know, he was going to engage that blocker, but instead he goes for the pass and able to step in front and become the receiver. He's so effective at doing that, taking that back to the house. We talked to Gary Nord yesterday, the longtime offensive coordinator under Howard Schnellenberger at Louisville and here at FAU, and he said Moffitt is a guy who really just stays home. Uh, keeps his assignments yeah. pretty conservative because everybody else is doing wild stuff and he's just always there picks up the loose well, ball. Wally Burnham also pointed out that hey he runs a 4-6. People talk about him not being fast but some of those other guys are so fast that a 4-6 may not look like blazing. We can listen in. They're having trouble with the play clock. And so now they will give the quarterbacks they will give the quarterbacks the signals. I think under this situation, the quarterbacks just need to be pretty quick in their decisions. <laughs> They're going to inform him when that clock is running down, and he'll have a running tab in his head because they're not able to match it up. They're trying to fix the problem here at this stadium. Uh, it's uh, just off Commercial Boulevard in Fort Lauderdale. It has been here forever, the longtime home of the Fort Lauderdale Strikers some 20, 25 years ago, the professional soccer team. Now high school football is played here. In fact, there was a game here last night. So it's an old stadium. <laughs> there are some bugs in the system, I'm sure. Well, and you said it's the Big East officiating crew, so they're not familiar with the stadium. Uh, the Sun Belt Conference guys may be. While we're working our uh, problems out, let's check in with Mike Gleason in the studio. All right, Mike, thank you. Finally, third down for FAU. Remember, the first pass was incomplete. The second completed to Concherio Johnson. Now third down and five. Rusty Smith from the gun. There's the check. He's got time. To the outside, that's a first down FAU. That was a rifle shot to Cortez Gantz. Yeah, he's an outstanding player, Doug. He had a great game against Minnesota, but that was a great catch against a guy that was draped over him in Mike Jenkins. Does an excellent job of just getting down the field and on that out. Look at Mike Jenkins, one of those great cornerbacks for this team and always around, but just a good throw by Rusty Smith and catch by Gent. Pick up a 15, two out of three now for Rusty Smith. First running play of the game goes to William Rose. He picks up five over the right side. That's a good push for Florida Atlantic. And that's going to be key for Florida Atlantic coming into today's game. They only have 36% on third down conversion. So for them, get the first down. They have to win on first down. That was the key that Gary Nord talked about. You get five or six yards. That way we can stop them a little bit and not let them get in that pass rush situation with Selby. Again, we'll watch the matchup, and for you at home, watch the center matchup. Nick Paris of FAU, Richard Klebert of South Florida. FAU coaches worried a little bit about that matchup. Here comes Mr. Selby on the outside, giving 10 and a half sacks. Doug, when you have a play where you go boot and no one touches Selby, this is how you get a minus 11 yard sack and Taking him down. Look, I mean, no one touched him, and that's the thing. He's so quick. Brandon Jackson is supposed to be there. 65 goes in. He turns open. He becomes a turnstile, and he just allows Selby to go out. You got to attack him and not have, let him have that free rush. Watch for the tight end to line up on that side. The back will help out. Selby just too quick for Brandon Jackson. Wow. He turned Buck, and he was already by him. Well, he turned inside and left that open area to Selby to come right off the edge. Third down and 15. Uh-oh. Lost the handle, gets it back. 
Picks up one. Selvi and Moffitt on the stop. Hunting situation for the Owls. And see, they're worried also, Doug, about Nick Harris, one against Aaron Harris, and Richard Claybert. So that hurts them outside because those guys aren't getting all the help. And in those situations, they only have five linemen against South Florida, who comes with four most of the time. They will bring a blitz, but they're so good with just their four down linemen. Marcus Edwards deep for South Florida. Keegan Peterson averaging just over 41 yards a kick this season. Will kick into a stiff bridge. Oh, that was partially blocked. That goes out of bounds right at the 50-yard line. Flag down. South Florida says they touched the football. That's not what the referee saw. Only a 19-yard punt. I thought he got a hand on it. It sounded like it. It did sound like a boo boo. And will it be running into the kicker or roughing the kicker is another. Coach Schnellenberger has asked for an explanation. Five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. See, that's the key, Doug, just running into him and not roughing. But I, I agree with you. I thought he got the touch before he hit the, hit the kicker. Didn't see it on the slow-mo. He definitely got uh, knocked to the ground, but that's just a five-yard penalty, so it's still fourth down and nine. And once again, Peterson will boot it away. Marcus Edwards lines up at the 30. Normally he'd be a little farther back, but this breeze here coming off the beach is a stiff one today. In fact, if we were on the water like we were yesterday, Buck, we'd be bouncing around. A low kick into the wind. Edwards will let it bounce. And FAU downs it at the 25. A 39-yard kick, not bad. No return. The Bulls on the attack when we come back. I must say, our 3.30 Eastern game on Saturday, we do some serious prep work, huh? Yeah, we do. That was fun yesterday. That was. That was a good time. Good Matt, time. Matt Grothy's had a good time this season. His helmet covers up the mohawk. And I understand his mom is not too excited about that mohawk look, but he decided to do it right before the West Virginia game last week. Parents just don't understand, right? <laughs> <laughs> Certainly brought the guys together. They really look up to this young man. He's only six feet tall. There's a completed pass to the outside of Torres Johnson. You know, we told you about the Mohawks and what Matt Grothy has brought to the table as far as unity, and I guess that has rubbed off on our team on Saturdays. In fact, look at the guys in the truck. Yes, they all got the haircuts. Looking good, fellas. I like that. Very handsome, I might add. Their moms are upset at home right now. Yeah, their moms are now <laughs> throwing things at the TV set. Benjamin Williams, first down, South Florida. Good blocking up front. Acevedo runs him out of bounds. Let's check in with Mike Gleason in the studio. Wow, I mean, I, I continue to be amazed each and every week. I'm not sure why. We see upset after upset. There's a loose football on the ground. FAU jumps on it. It was a fumble and a recovery by the Owls. That's Tavius Polo. And Polo got it done. And, and that really... He's always around the football. Didn't cause the fumble, but had the fumble recovery. You know, when you played that thing in that game when you were young, Marco Polo, well, here it is. Great turnover right there, making the ball come out. And maybe it was Tavius Polo sticking that hand in and getting it out. Let's watch. Yeah, he did. Outstanding job by the young man. Getting it out of Cedric Hill's hands. Nice play. Sincere kind of stripped it. Yeah. Polo was right there. They both went after the football. Sincere got it last, but Polo was flying by. Great field position. Great opportunity for FAU. Rusty Smith in the draw play. Charles Pierre. Positive yardage for Pierre. Young man from Orlando. Selby on the stop. Almost all of these kids from FAU, like upstart programs, most of them were redshirted. Yeah. Schnellenberger recruits them and tells them, we're building something here. You're going to sit. That kid's a redshirt junior. You know, and both of these ball clubs do a good job of taking the ball away, Doug. And you can see right there, South Florida does a good job of usually protecting it, but Florida Atlantic will get after the football. Second down and seven. Smith almost bounced that one, and he could not hook up. 
incomplete. We told you about that big win. Howard Schnellenberger against the Gophers of Minnesota. They played at Dolphin Stadium. You'll see the baseball field and the Dolphins logos around. And Mr. Polo was yelling Marco quite a few times. Three picks. There's the touchdown by Pierre. Rusty Smith brought FAU back as Minnesota rallied late in the contest. But there's your man, Buck. Yeah, Tavius Polo has just found a way to get, even after they picked on him, he still comes back and gets turnovers. Smith wide open. Jason Harmon over the middle. First down, Nate Allen trips him up along with Carlton Williams. Well, we talked about his favorite guy, Doug, and Jason Harmon across the middle of the field. Watch this cover two look. He's going to get right in the middle of the field. Watch Big 88 come right now. Everybody clears out. That gives him an open lane. And Rusty Smith, he looked outside and it came back with that funny arm action, but gets it right in between the safeties and over the linebackers. The Owls on the attack, trying to make some noise early on. Going right into the end zone that's loaded with South Florida fans. Jerry at Bowie jumps for South Florida. Rusty Smith signaling. It's definitely against USF. Well, that's the situation where the center usually tries Offside, to get it off. 90 on the defense. Five yard penalty, still first down. To make sure they can get him in the neutral zone. So this, Doug, this is the kind of game where South Florida comes in after a huge win, and then you're playing people that you, you know. They've known each other all their lives. A lot of these guys have played against each other. Pop Warner football. You know, they've been around the block, recruited against each other. Now they get a chance for the Atlantic to show how good they can play. Rusty Smith, 3 of 5 for 37 yards. Tall quarterback can see over that line of scrimmage. That goes to William Rose, and that goes nowhere right into the teeth of that defense. Flavert was there. Carlton Williams, the strong safety, comes up the line of scrimmage was there, too. You want to see why they only give up 64% in the red zone. Look at this. Guys just flying around the football. Richard Klaybert was the first one. The big guy shows up, but then everyone, Bruce Moffey, Premier, and everybody else is kind of converging along with Ben Moffitt. They only give up, Doug, 29%, 4 or 14 touchdowns on the year in the red zone. Tough to score against the South Florida defense in this area. Second down and seven. Again, FAU going into that wind. It is a stiff breeze. Haven't seen the Bobby Smith so far. There's an incomplete pass. Trying to throw to Chris Bonner. South Florida defensively, Buck. I mean, that is very impressive. I dare say by the end of the year, they could be virtually first or second in every category. Yeah. And they take the ball away so well. They work on this. You know, they, they Florida Atlantic, however, has 19 now. They only have 17. But what they do is everybody on that defensive side believes that they can get a turnover, they can get an interception, they can strip the ball. I mean, they all go after the football, but they're very good tacklers as well. It's third down. FAU two out of three so far. Third down conversions. Oops. Somebody jumped. Selby jumped yeah. across, but again, Brandon Jackson flinched a little bit. We'll see which way the call goes. And it's surprising that they're not really using the tight end right now to chip on Selby. They're going four wides and using the tight ends to split out. False start. Number 88 on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. And see, that's... Jason Harmon, who's a tight end that's split out, shouldn't move. You're going to see him. Can't, well, Jackson, you can't even see Harmon. He's outside. He's right there, 88 now on the screen, but he flinched. That's Gary Nord talking to Howard Schnellenberger. David Cerna also there, the running backs coach. Nord was the taller fellow who walked by Coach Schnellenberger. There he is, backing up. Third down and 12. The South Florida fans are making some noise in the end zone. Over the middle. Had his man 
for a moment Jason Harmon, but just overshot it. Had to be a perfect pass. It was just a little high. Yeah, he did. Nate Allen was down low playing man, and then Jerome Murphy up high. They play. They, they don't have a problem playing man down here, and this is why they can do it because they force you into trying to make the perfect throw. So you got one high and one low. Nate Allen behind Jerome Murphy. That corner that's in on on the nickel package underneath couldn't get that ball in to the receiver. Marley Leroy has had a good year. Eight out of ten. This is a 36-yarder into the wind. And it looks like he hooked it to the left, and he did. Tried to give it a little extra against the wind. I tell you, in golf, when you give it a little extra, it happens the same thing. You pull it left. And that ball just died in the air also. It pushes back. Leroy has been so good this year. 80% against the wind. Too much ump. 0-0 zero, zero the score. ESPNU College Football is presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? And in part by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts with Dick's. Hey, check out a young uh, member of our crew, Cameron Ford, who's actually the son of Dan Ford, who does such a fine job shooting our handheld camera. That was a nice year. There's Dan. Hey, you got a great son and finally put a shirt on. I was worried he didn't. He's a, he's a Florida kid. He didn't have a shirt on all day yesterday. Hey, man, he was trying to enjoy the sun. He didn't want to put that zinc oxide on his nose like you did. Hey, I didn't want to get burned, you know. To the outside, completed to Amari Jackson. Good tackle. A search sincere. Let's go down to Melissa Knowles. Guys, I had a chance to talk with Coach Schnellenberger earlier this week, and he told me that his team is coming out here with the belief that, you know, they are the odds are against them in winning, but these guys are up on their feet. They don't look at all intimidated, and they look like they are ready to win, guys. Let's see what happens in the long run, Melissa. Right now, they are fired up. You're right. Great crowd on hand. Biggest one they've ever had at Lockhart Stadium. And as Buck mentioned, uh, they played high school, many of these guys, against the South Florida guys. These are Florida boys against Florida boys. Good tackle there by Jermaine Council. Now, this is a guy that had to make plays today. Jermaine Council coming in now, had some injuries on that defensive line. He flew to the football, and that was a good play against a speedy guy, Taurus Johnson. Taurus Johnson is outstanding. You can see that. Look at that. That's how you make a play for the big defensive tackle inside. The only thing that saved him, Doug, is going to the short side of the field. He knows he can use the sideline, but he did a great job of getting down there and making that tackle. Council, an impressive-looking player at 6'5", 280 on that defensive end. Third down for Grothy. Has time. Has a man wide open. Jesse Hester, first down South Florida. Let's check in with Mike Gleason in the studio. Absolutely huge game for Philip Fulmer. I mean, this is a pivotal year after getting blown out by Cal in Florida. They can ill afford to lose another one at home, this time to Georgia. Ooh. To the outside again. Amari Jackson run out of bounds by Tavius Polo. Picks up four. Let's check in on the starting lineup now for the South Florida Bulls. You know about Matt Grothy, the talented quarterback who's getting better all the time up front. Walter Walker, his coaches said he played like an NFL caliber tackle against West Virginia, especially in the third and fourth quarters. Wide receivers, Johnson Edwards are all fast, can move. Five for five, Matt Grothy so far for 35 yards. Nowhere to go. Gets hemmed up in the middle and goes down. Loses one on that exchange for the Owls of FAU up front. We told you about Jermaine Council, an impressive looking young man. And a defense that's getting better. Franz Joseph makes a lot of tackles. Serge Sincere has been around this program from Belle Glade. They've produced so many great college players from that area. Small and of course Tavius Polo leads the country in picks. Grothy third down and seven. Wind at his back. Wide open first down. South Florida Cedric Hill brought down by Polo 14 yard pickup. Well this is the area where they want to make Grothy beat him with their arm, his arm and he does a good job here of evading the rush. Empty backfield, so they want to come after him, pressure him. He gets out of the pocket, but what he does a good job for is he keeps his eyes down the field. Cedric Hill only had two receptions on the whole year, has two so far today. He's that guy that Florida Atlantic has to look for. You focus so much on the receivers, you got to worry about this tight end.
tight end. Hill is a big receiver. You saw those dimensions, 6'3", 230. He's their best blocker. And that time he was blocking the too many blue jerseys. Franz Joseph wrestles down Williams, a loss of one. Well, Kirk Hosa, the defensive coordinator, said Franz Joseph had to have a good game. He's the guy with the most ability on this defense, signed with Boston College out of high school. But then he came to, came back home, so to speak. But look at this. He gets there with mean intentions. When you watch him on film, he doesn't miss many tackles. He inserts and sincere, a very good, sure, dependable tackler. And they also come and wrap up and try to get that football out. He is on the Butkus Award list. All 300 pounders along that front for South Florida. Grothy looks to the outside. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Sincere on the stop, Jamar Taylor. Coming up tonight on ESPNU, two more great matchups. It's Tulane against Army, and then Maine against Hofstra at 10 Eastern Saturday. Primetime college football presented by City on the U. Doug, on that last play, Kirk Poza, the defensive coordinator, was almost on the field. The officials had to tell him to get off because he knew the ball carrier was going to get that ball. The back in the backfield was going to get a slant or a fade route on the sideline or a flare route. And he was almost on the field telling his defense where it was coming. Grothy calls timeout. Ninth play of the drive. They're getting ready to run. Jim Levitt. Uh, Ralph Friedgen of Maryland, Buck, a few weeks ago when we did the Wake Forest game, he was wound tight. <laughs> and we went up to Levitt today on the field as he's running sprints across the field from sideline to sideline. No exaggeration. He might be the most wound tight coach I've been around. But you know what? I, I like I like his demeanor because you know what, what's good about him? He's a psychology major. And he won't ever give you anything. He always kind of just talks to you and tells you what, you, but, but what he does is such a good job of doing this. Started in 1995. He came home from Kansas State where he was the defensive coordinator. 80 to three against Kentucky Wesley. That's the old Tampa Stadium, by the way. First Big East game against Louisville. And here we are, number six in the country. Of course, people don't realize how big it is. 44,000 plus on a gorgeous campus in Tampa. It's a commuter school and it's just uh, it's amazing what he has done in building this they program. They used to put lights out so they could practice at night. The coaches would line their cars up so guys could practice in the evening when it got dark. Third down and 10. And again, as the first quarter winds down, a breeze of about 18 miles per hour at the back of Grothy and Company. They need to take advantage. Wide open down the middle of the field. He overshoots Jesse Hester, who had a step on Cardell Brantley. Well, and they wanted the blitz. They came with pressure, and they got the matchup that they wanted. You got a fast receiver inside going against Cordell Brantley, a safety. But what happens here, sometimes when you get open as a receiver, you stick your hands out a little too soon, and you lose your balance. Jesse had a chance, but he couldn't run under. Watch, he kind of loses his balance, and doesn't quite run all the way through it. And the wind behind Grothy's back takes the ball even further than it probably normally would go. Delbert Alvarado, punch and kicks. Up into that win, Polo calls to the very catch, but lets it bound into the end zone. 47-yard punt, wind at his back. Clouds above us, but the sun is still shining. No score. Yeah, we were lifeguards yesterday as well. We were looking for David Hasselhoff and the rest of the Baywatch gang. Uh, couldn't find him. But that was a pretty good spot we had, huh? Yeah. Went away in the 80s, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny. Rusty Smith now, behind him, the end zone full of Florida Atlantic students. And they're yelling, overrated. And they better be careful. It's still early in this contest. And that South Florida defense will come at you. Pierre, though, takes a hit. Positive gain, five-yard pickup. Let's find out what's happening in the Red River rivalry with Mike Gleason. Boomer Sooner early on. I had a feeling they were going to bounce back perhaps more so than any of the other teams that uh, won those games last week. We already saw Kansas State after beating Texas. They go down at home to KU. Oh, there's a hit. Wow. That was a shot by Mom Premier when he came down hard like a hammer. Six top 25 matchup today, Buck. Of course, we had one on Thursday night, South Carolina, Kentucky. I mean, this... Uh, 
has been a wild week in college football. Yeah, it has been. And, and two weeks in a row. I mean, how many? <laughs> about two weeks of upsets, and then you have all these matchups in top 25 coming at a perfect point in the season where people are really starting to get into their conference play and also just getting an opportunity to see who's really going to shake out and take a dash for that national championship. FAU trying to steal some headlines or make headlines of their own with a win today. Long way to go. Rusty Smith overshoots Jason Harmon. You know, it's so hard against the South Florida defense to get open. You know, Jason Harmon, when you watch him on film against Kentucky or Minnesota, he was running free. They did a very good job of protecting, and they want to get the hands down. Watch Bowie's going to get cut down by Charles Pierre. Good job there, but they're not, he's not able to get separation from Ben Moffitt. Quarterback sees that jersey locked to you like that, stuck on him like that, like Saran Wrap. It's hard for him to get that ball to you. Can't put the food away. Can't put the frozen <laughs> food away if the Saran Wrap is wrapped up on something else. Peterson on to punt again into that stiff breeze. Here comes the pressure. He gets it away. A low, wobbly kick that takes an FAU roll and again, no return. So the Owls are hanging in there. A 37 yard punt, no return. And keep in mind, South Florida has absolutely dominated this season in the first quarter, outscoring opponents 35 to 3. And right now, FAU hanging on. They really are. And they're trying to keep it close. They're, they're doing a very good job against South Florida on first down. And then they're not that one big pass, which is an opportunity, but they played very solid football, FAU, and they're flying to the football, too. It's good to watch these two teams and the similarities on defense, how they get after you. Grothy has been described by his coaches as a gritty kid. They really like uh, what he brings to the table, aside from all the physical things. Hard running here by Benjamin Williams. Devontae Jackson on the stop for FAU. Six yard pickup for Williams. Yeah, well, Tahim Acevedo also came up. He flies to the football. When you watch number nine, not a very big guy. 6'1, 220. He's a good size free safety, but he flies around the football out of Miami, Florida. Williams and Mike Ford, along with Jamar Taylor, really make a three headed monster for South Florida as you look at Acevedo, redshirt senior on this program for five years. Second down. Grothy, first down, busted into the outside. Gets pushed out of bounds by Andre Clark. But we were just sitting there talking about Acevedo, and Grothy made him miss and picked up 15 yards. Now, this is where you got to come up as a free safety and, and, and force and fill gap. Watch right here. Perfect opportunity, but he gets stuck. Grothy is a good enough athlete where you get one-on-one -on -one with him and you think, oh, he's not that fast. I can break down. Watch right here. Boom, I'm going by you. Then you have to rely on Andre Clark to come over and clean up the mess. First and 10 from the 39. Grothy from the gun. Play action with time. Wide open again. This is Marcus Edwards, young man from Mayo, Florida. Lafayette High School. Opportunity right there for Grothy to get on that second level, get behind those linebackers and in between the safeties. Just couldn't quite get it to him. Now, he'll throw to anybody also. That's the other thing that, you know, you can see Cedric Hill only has two catches coming into today's ball game, has two today. And Marcus Edwards with only three, but he throws to a lot of different receivers. Second down and 10. Grothy's going to five different guys. This is the reverse. Torres Johnson cutting it back, showing some nifty moves, but he takes a lot of hits, and finally, Serge Sincere brings him down. He, all that, he picks up one. Hey, that was a walk-in classic kind of move. He had about six or seven people in a five-by-five five space, and it was hard for them to grab him. Now, Torres Johnson is probably the best and most physically gifted receiver on this team. Has a tendency to drop some of those passes to search this year. His family from Haiti. This guy is a stat stuffer. Now, he leads the team and four fumbles. Has four now after earlier one today. Always around the football. Third down and nine for the South Florida Bulls. Number six in the country. Wind at his back. Brothy. Nowhere to go. Takes a shot, but he wiggles out of trouble. First down, South Florida. Marcus Edwards. 
Dorothy, a magician, working his way out of trouble. Oh, we're next to the Florida Atlantic and South Florida coaching boots, and one boot was going crazy. You know which one, and the other one is upset right here. Jermaine Council pushes the pocket back and has Brophy, but Brophy's a strong kid. And Amari Jackson staying alive, not John Travolta, but staying alive on that route, picking up 27 yards. Look at this, getting out of that trouble and getting around the kid out of Lakeland, Florida. We told you he's a tough competitor. First and 10, gaping hole in the middle. South Florida gets it down to the five yard line. Williams on the carry, Franz Joseph on the hit. Now we haven't seen much of Mike Ford in the running game, 26 for South Florida. Benjamin Williams is an interesting story though, former walk-on who was like, he wasn't even on the depth chart, like seventh on the depth chart when he came here, but just kept working and working and finally got a chance to start last year and earned a scholarship. He's the best in their pass pro game in the one back set. That's why he plays so much. Williams four carries 17 yards. This is his fifth carry. And it's a touchdown, USF. Benjamin Williams, his second touchdown of the season. That Florida Atlantic defensive line was tired. All of those guys with their hands on the hip is a prime example of sucking for air, looking for extra oxygen. And that was a play right there where Benjamin Williams was able to find the gap. Open, the hold opened up, and he was just able to run through it. But the, defense, the defenders were very tired at that point. Alvarado on for the extra point. Williams with the high fives. A lot of congratulations along the sidelines of the sixth ranked team in the country. Takes a 7 nothing lead. An impressive march with the wind at their back. They've been dominating in the first quarter of this season, and that was more like it. Well, that was just good power running football inside. And inside draw, and you have the free safety or strong safety, Chris Bartels, who's the last line of defense. Good blocking right there by Ryan Smith. Comes over and nice block. Watch Big 65 cleaning that hole open. And then they're doing things on the backside with Jake Griffin and Mark Dial. But when you have a hole like that, it makes it easy. The strong safety or the free safety has to come down in the alley, so to speak. But sometimes you can get beat up in those alleys, man. Or get shaken down like Kasim Acevedo earlier. Tahim, excuse me. Jim Levitt talking to his guys. Let's talk to our guy, Mike Gleason. All right, Glee, that SEC East is uh, wild. Oh, it is wild. Yes. <laughs> you don't know who's going to come out of that one, right? LSU is going to play somebody that appears in that championship game, assuming they keep playing like they have been. And there's the kick through the end zone, and it'll be a touchback. FAU will start from the 20. Not much win there behind that kick, but <laughs> I just uh, I don't want to talk about it too much but it is a stiff breeze and it's coming right off the ocean I mean we are just a stone's throw from the ocean and look at it blow west the westwardly direction let's check in the sidelines with Melissa now guys you would think that that may have discouraged Florida Atlantic just a little bit but no these guys over here and all you hear is regroup guys it's time to regroup we got to get back out there and work this is just the first quarter guys all right we'll keep up to date on the, the tenor on the sidelines because it is so important when you're on the sidelines you really feel the emotion of what the kids are going through. Rusty Smith rolling out. That's a pretty pass. That's a first down. Chris Bonner on the receiving end, 14 yards. Nate Allen on the stop for USF. We talked about a lot of boot, let, boot action and moving and redirecting this defense to make them run around some. And you can see when they have time and Rusty Smith is able to complete the pass, there's some open spaces against the South Florida defense. Gary Nord, the offensive coordinator, has been with Coach Schnellenberger for a long, long time. As the first quarter comes to an end, he went after Rusty Smith and recruited him long and hard, and he got his man. And we'll see if Smith can bring the Owls back in this second quarter. USF has come over from Tampa, and they're snorting and doing all those things the Bulls do as they lead 7-0 over FAU. Shells actually drawing plays X's and O's in the sand. That's what we were doing yesterday as we were out to walk in the Fort Lauderdale Beach. South Florida on top 7-0. Coach Schnellenberger wears that blazer no matter what. And so does my partners. You'll see in a moment. Uh, 
In honor of Coach Snell, you got your blazer on. Buck, we'll come to you in just a sec. I'm trying to do what Coach Snellenberger <laughs> does. He doesn't take it off all game. I take mine and put it back on. <laughs> He's old school. You're old school. Start of the second quarter, Rusty Smith and company trying to get something going against this tenacious defense, and they do. Great blocking up front, great ride, DeAndre Edgecombe. Wow, nice run by Edgecombe, 21 yards for the junior from Miami. Well, the best way to attack a speed defense is to go right at him. And you can see Ivory Edgecombe right up the middle. Good blocking inside, giving him an opportunity. Jared Smith, one of them right there, but he opens that hole and he's able to get off the ball very quickly. Watch it right here to the second, third level really quickly. And those missed tackles hurt South Florida on that play. First and 10 again, the win now behind the back of FAU. And it does make a difference. It is a strong South Florida win. Smith has his man, Jason Harmon. A terrific combination. And Smith showing off that throwing motion like Phillip Rivers, kind of the sidearm motion. That was a 13-yard pickup. Crowd loves it. It is a hot, steamy day, of course, in this press box. It's about 108 degrees, but still with the jacket on. You're looking good. I'm trying to go in honor <laughs> of Coach Snellenberger, who doesn't take his off as well. If he can do it, I can do it today. Hey, tell me about USF. They're relentless. I mean, it's like a boxing match. FAU has survived, but you know they're, the haymaker's coming eventually. FAU has to take advantage of opportunities to score points, and they didn't do it on the first time when they had a chance to get that field goal. Again, Edgecombe. He dodges Klebert and then runs right into the teeth there. But Doug, I like what they're doing. Gary Nord and his staff are really running after and being more effective at going at the South Florida defense. If you try to do things on the edge, sometimes they're so fast, but if you attack them up the middle, that's where your best opportunities are. Yeah. Edgecombe is a terrific receiver out of the backfield. Well, you know, he and Willie Rose, between the two of them, one has 11, Willie Rose, 11 receptions on the year. Edgecombe with 18, so they catch the ball a lot out of the backfield. To the outside. That was almost a backward pass, but it goes forward incomplete. Let's check it with Mike Gleason in the studio. All right, that's going to be fun. If you've ever been to a Texas OU game at Fairgrounds there in Dallas, and it's, it's half and half, half orange, <laughs> half red. I mean, it's, it is one of the best atmospheres in the history of college football. It really is. This isn't so bad either. Lockhart Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. Third down for FAU. Over the middle. He caught it and dropped it. It's incomplete. Didn't have it long enough, Jason Harmon. Well, Jason Harmon trying to tuck the ball away, and that's an opportunity. See, every time Florida Atlantic gets in this area, they have that opportunity to make some plays. And Rusty Smith with a nice throw in the middle again to the big tight end, but when he goes to tuck the ball away, he throws it away from himself instead of putting it into his body. But those are opportunities you have to capitalize on. That gives you a first down inside the red zone, a chance again to come away with seven instead of three. 42-yard attempt for Warley Leroy, who missed his first attempt in the first quarter. Did he hook it again? Yes, that's two. He's hooked to the left. No good. That hurts, as Buck says. Coach Schnellenberger needs to take advantage of those opportunities, and they have not. Back in Fort Lauderdale, Doug Bell along with Charles Arbuckle. ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate, the sixth-ranked USF Bulls. On top, 7-0. Could be 7-6, but two missed field goals by FAU. And their field goal kicker, Warley Leroy, came into this game 8 out of 10. 80%. Grothy. Benjamin Williams. Check that, that's Jamar Taylor, his first carry. Andre Clark on the stop. Let's check and find out what's happening with the Vols and Ontario. Bulldogs. Mike Gleason. Thanks, Glee. Steve Israel, the flash in the studio today with Mike. To the outside completed pass. To Amari Jackson, his first catch of the day. Grothy having a great game numbers-wise. Nine out of 11 now, Buck. But not a lot of yards, and I think the reason why is the sure tackling by Florida Atlantic after the receivers catch the ball. Right here, you gotta have guys right away. Corey Small with a good job. Amari Jackson, he'll make you miss and he can take it to the house. Former quarterback in high school. Outstanding basketball player as well. Those are the numbers of Grothy. Now when they go this empty set, no backs in the backfield, this is where they really wanna pressure Grothy. Three wide to his right. 
Boy, he's got all day, and he's going to run it himself. First down. Dorothy put his head down. Serge Sincere stopped him, but now before another USF first down. They wanted to send more people, and Kirk Hosa, they, you know, they want on that particular play, when they come with five guys spread out, no backs in the backfield, they know they can get after Dorothy because he's usually going to be the runner, and he shows you right there. First down, South Ford on top. As you look at Jim Levitt, who wears that trademark visor, has the spiked hair. Sounded like he was losing his voice when we spoke to him this week, Buck. Grothy goes down again. He takes some pops. Kibo at Florida takes hits, and so does yeah. Grothy. Well, they, they rely on him to run the football, and this is a perfectly timed play for them. They send Amari Jackson to get that defense moving over a little bit and trying to get Grothy a little inside zone on his own using the receiver as opposed to a running back. Total yards, South Florida really starting to add up. 169 to 93. FAU has moved the ball. They missed two field goals. Ryan Smith was shaken up on that last play, so they're going to send Zach Herman in in place of him. Schmidt, the young man who transferred from Kansas State. They've had some movement on the line because Nick Capona has been able to come back. He was injured early in the year, and they really needed him, and they said this was the first week where they had all the guys healthy. This is the lineman's worst nightmare is when the back comes over you and you get rolled up on you can see him right there look big 65 and when they go down like that it's like somebody just shoots their legs out from under them but they get rolled up on the back all that weight mass comes up on the back of them. those offensive linemen in college all wear those metal knee braces on both knees it really helps to stabilize things especially when you're over 300 pounds like Schmidt who's 330 that's Jamar Taylor going nowhere Jermaine Council on the stop for FAU. College hockey takes the ice on ESPNU Sunday afternoon as Clarkson, ranked number seven in the country, face neighbor and rival St. Lawrence. It's college hockey on ESPNU Sunday at 4 Eastern. You know, that last play, Julian Myers, one of the backup defensive ends with a lot of speed, was in there, one of the first guys in the backfield on that play. FAU with only two down linemen, an unusual one, and they only sent two in to rush. Nine back and pass defense. That's no, he was out of bounds. Grothy was looking for Jesse Hester and had it, but he was out of bounds. He has spread the ball, spread the wealth. He really has, and that's, he has so many different receivers, and they all get a chance to catch it. But when you look at the stats at the end of the game, it could be eight, nine, sometimes ten different guys with catches. You're going to see that again today. They really throw the ball around very effectively, but that particularly last time, they weren't able to convert on third down. Alvarado on to punt for South Florida. Maybe his polo is deep. And South Florida gets close to almost every kick. Polo fills it at the 27. Wiggles his way out of the first tackler. Gets it up to the 37. A 35-yard punt. When we come back, a special guest. She knows the middle linebacker for South Florida intimately. Welcome back for Lauderdale, Lockhart Stadium, home of the FAU Owls. They trail number six, South Florida, 7 0. That's the inspirational leader for this USF defense, Ben Moffitt. And Melissa's standing by with someone who knows him so very well. That's right. Now, Shauna, how far away do you and Ben live, and how far is that commute to school? Oh, um, well, we live in Bushnell, Florida. It's um, north of Hillsborough County, where the school is. Um, Tampa it takes about 45 minutes. I would say it's probably 55 miles. Each way. Each way. <laughs> yes. Ha has he ever been late to practice? No. Ben is um, always on time. I think he's scared to death of being late. Um, but he's never been late, never missed a practice. Um, even with sick babies, he's very committed to being on time and being um, being a leader. So thank you so much, Shana. Thank you. Guys. Great stuff, Melissa and Ben. Let one fall through his hands there. He was nervous because yeah. the wife was doing an interview. The wifey with her shirt on. Well, look at this. He had an opportunity to come up with the pick, and he's trying to run with the football before he catches it. And there was also a flag on that play. A penalty against USF. Last week, Ben Moffitt was the Big East Player of the Week after his performance against West Virginia. And that last play was defensive holding. But this is why, you know, the Big East is now called the Big Beast, according to Brian Kelly, who's Cincinnati 
and they are what, now three and five and zero oh now. But a lot of this, these teams out of the Big East have played outstanding games, and he had the best as a defender last week. The Moffats lived in Tampa for a while, and they just didn't like the big city rush, and so they went back to Bushnell, where they both grew up, went to high school. They were high school sweethearts. To the outside, it's a first down for FAU. Cortez Ginn on the receiving end. Mike Jenkins threw him out of bounds. If Mike Jenkins doesn't get there, Cortez Jim may be going for more than 13. Could have been to the house. I mean, he had a chance. Yards after catch, we talked about it on the other side, but him breaking a tackle, actually just getting open. And if he gets by Jenkins, even though there's some guys with angles like Carlton Williams, he may still be running. First and 10 from the 39. He's the fifth possession for FAU. Two punts, two missed field goals. Let's see what transpires here. Going nowhere was DeIvory Edgecombe. Loses three yards on that play. Let's check out what's happening in the Big East and the Sun Belt. The Big East, three undefeated teams, four teams in the top 25. Tonight, the big game between Cincinnati at Rutgers. And in the Sun Belt, we mentioned FAU tied with Troy for first. FAU second straight week, top 25. And a tough transition for Todd Dodge from high school, South Lake Carroll, to North Texas 0-5. Yeah, he, was, he couldn't lose down at, at South Lake Carroll, but now he's struggling to try to find some wins at North Texas. Second down. Coming back the other way, a dangerous play. Did he catch that? Yes, he did. DeIvory Edgecombe stretches out and makes an acrobatic catch. Wow. Great catch by DeIvory Edgecombe. And also, look who's in coverage. George Selby trying to stay with him. Look, he's trying to run with him. They say they don't, don't look a lot. Look at that catch. Oh, wow. Get the hands under, tuck it in. Selby's in coverage. Looked like the fish out of water. He really wants to come up the field. But he was in that coverage responsibility. See, those are the kind of plays you have to make against the South Florida defense. Third down and two. First team defensive front back in for South Florida. They were giving some guys a few blows there. William Rose angles for the first down. Very close. Picks up one. It'll be just short. Let's find out what's happening between Texas and OU. Mike Gleason. All right, Glee, keep us up to date. Fourth down. They're not going to go for a field goal this time, Buck. Rusty Smith shifts back into the shotgun. He's got a stretch for the first. I'm not sure he got it, lost his helmet. Well, he's not going to get it because Bowie, if they don't get it, Jared Bowie tipped the ball just enough to slow down 87. Jamari Grant. And then also the flow of the defense was there as well. I think Bowie just got enough of that ball. Watch on the replay. He's coming after. Yeah, he tips it just enough and he puts it behind. But even if he gets it clean, Ben Moffitt is right there on top of him. I mean, they had this play sniffed out. Good thought, good idea, but he almost got the ball blocked down, and then Moffitt with a nice play, reading and reacting and being at the right place, it almost seems like the right time every time. If that ball had been thrown properly, he may have taken it back the other way, Moffitt. Jamar Taylor in the backfield now next to Grothy. Grothy looks right and comes back left. Whoa, what a great stick that was. Serge Sincere. I mean, he just plasters Carlton Mitchell into the turf. You know, they talk about everybody on defense, but this guy, you, you're going to feel this hit when you play it real time. Watch Serge Sincere. Now, he's one of eight children by his mother, Joseph, I mean, his father, Joseph and Marlene, who have sent eight children to college. Great story there. Yes. But he, he flies to the football. That is a wonderful story. Growth to the outside. Jamar Taylor. Boy, he loses the football. Loose ball. FAU says they have it. And they do. 19 takeaways on the year because of this defense. This defense has allowed 36.5 points per game in the last four games. But this is what they do so well. They fly to the football. Watch Florida Atlantic in this defense. All these blue jerseys, okay? You're going to have one guy come up and make the tackle, and then Serge Sincere. Look at the intensity. Jermaine Council, then they hit you about five or six, seven guys. That could go to the team as a forced fumble. But all of them right there flying to the football, taking the ball away, and then getting it. 
FAU, you think they're pumped up? They want another opportunity against this South Florida defense. Yeah, they're revved up. When your coaches are geeked up like that, that gets you as a player hype because you know they're behind you. You know they're looking for you to make plays. Big 45, uh, whenever I turn on the film, he always shows up in some way. He's a stat stuff. Taylor is down. Boy, the coach is fired up. Jamar Taylor will check his injury when we come back here on ESPNU. That's Jamar Taylor who was uh, shaken up in that last play. Let's check in and uh, find out more about it with Melissa. Taylor was really coming off that field as if he was in a lot of pain. Now he's over here leaning over and they're looking at his left ankle. They've removed his sock and all the tape around it and they're kind of pressing on to see if it's just strained or if it actually is broken. I'll have more for you later guys. I saw him play in the spring game Jamar Taylor at Alabama. And he led all running backs for 44 yards in that spring game where 92,000 showed up and he transferred uh, because of an illness in his family down here in Florida. Go to the ground, B.J. Manley tripped up by Nate Allen. Back to the studio now, Mike Gleason. Wow. That is a wow. Oh, man. And I'm telling you. And George is so good on the road. The heat was turned up on Philip Fulmer. Yeah. I mean, this was, a, if a coach ever had to win a game, this was one for Philip Fulmer. Rusty Smith has time throws it incomplete everybody was covered that was just terrific uh, blanket defense in the secondary well and good pressure by Bruce Lompkins premier right there forcing Rusty into a throw where he really had to throw the ball away no receiver open South Florida T defense seems to always come up with a key takeaway at times like this they're plus eight coming into today's ball game now plus six because they've lost two balls and you can see, look at Jim Levin. He's just, I mean, he's, <laughs> I bet you the shirt you ring it, you can ring his shirt out. Really, he was running from sideline to sideline, wind sprints before the game today. Smith to the outside, rifles one to Jamari Grant, who goes down immediately by Lewis Gachet. But see, so you look at that play, and it's not going to get you a first down because Grant can't turn up the field. That's a tough, they, they send off the receivers, and the tight end kind of runs the, uh, the arrow right to the sideline, but he hasn't been able to turn up the field. You have a guy right there. Levitt is khaki pants. And you see Wally Burnham next to him. His aren't soiled at all. 44-yard field goal attempt. Wari Leroy is 0 for 2 today. Can he get FAU on the board? And he hooks another one. No. I never would have thought that he would have missed three field goals today. When you thought of coming into this game, the Delbert Alvarado had been struggling. He was 5 of 10. And Wally Leroy was 8 of 10. And this is with the win at his back, those two in particular, but that first miss seemed to have just gotten into his head. Leroy played his high school ball at Boca Raton, which is just right down I-95, about 10 minutes. Played soccer and football, and he's been an excellent kicker, but today he's really struggled. The opportunistic FAU defense. They've done a job this year. Benjamin Williams back in with Taylor injured and Serge Sincere. Makes another stop. From the minute news for everything that is college sports, log on to ESPNU.com. It's an online service, a gateway to the best in college sports content from ESPN. Podcast, video highlights, and if you don't have ESPNU, log on to ESPNU.com and type in your zip code at the top of the page or call your local cable operator or satellite provider. Log on to ESPNU.com today. Second and 12 for Grothy. Time. Incomplete. Marcus Edwards on the receiving end and just couldn't catch it. Jermaine Council is coming out hurt. Excuse me, not Council. Javante Jackson. Shoulder injury of some sort. But I'll tell you, the other thing on this, if you're Florida Atlantic, here's a chance again to get another interception, but they haven't done anything with it. Haven't come away with any points. Third down and 12. Grothy's completed three of his last five passes for only eight yards. Rushing only three. Eight back in pass coverage. To the outside, did he get his feet down? Yes, he did. He's going to be short of the first down. Carl Carlton Mitchell was knocked out of bounds. Picks up eight on the play. 
And a punting situation against the wind for South Florida. Well, Carlton Mitchell, an outstanding young receiver, very talented. Does a good job with the feet, staying in bounds and just falling out. Good job there. Nice play, but a little bit short of that first down. Alvarado on to punt. Big splits there for South Florida. You see that a lot now. New configurations on punt protection. Davies Polo fields it at the 26 and goes down right away. 49-yard punt. Zero on the return. Great special teams coverage by South Florida. It was, and that's the area where you really can struggle in games like this, special teams. Let's check in with Mike Gleason in the studio. Mike, we look forward to it. You and the Flash, Steve Israel, do a great job. Looking forward to catching up on all the highlights and scores. And look at that blocking up front. Edgecombe picks up eight on the carry. Alec Cray on the stop for South Florida. This offensive line has done a, done a pretty good job of creating some space for the running back. But they haven't capitalized on, on points. They haven't been able to come away with scores. Pierre in there, tailback, lined up behind William Rose. And he takes it for a first down. Beautiful run. Great blocking up front. Charles Pierre, a determined run for FAE. Tyler Roberts drags it down after 22 yards. Well, give Willie Rose some credit on the very end. He comes on the side, and boom, nice block. You got Brandon Jackson, you have David Matlock, Nick Paris, all doing a good job of creating some space. And Charles Pierre is the one that's very hard to bring down with just one tackler. He's not the starter, but plays an awful lot for this FAU offense. First and 10 from the 44. Charles Pierre tried to bust it the outside and couldn't do it. Let's find out the latest on Jamar Taylor who got injured in that last South Florida drive. Melissa? That's right, guys. Now, he's laying over here flat with his left ankle propped up, and I, I asked him really quickly, Jamar, are you in a lot of pain? He told me, yeah, I'm okay. So I don't know if he's going to get back in the game because he's still laying down over here. We'll see. Guys? All right, let us know because we have not seen Mike Ford today. In fact, when we talked to the coaches, uh, they were quick to point out that Benjamin Williams would run first and Jamar Taylor would be the backup. Ford not playing today. Smith looking deep down the middle. Jason Harmon double covered. Let's go back to the studio, Mike Gleason. It's back and forth in Dallas. And there's Taylor. And listen, there you see his left ankle popped up with the ice on it. Yeah, the ice on it like that. He, he may not be coming back. <laughs> Got that fan blowing on him. Nice run there by Charles Pierre. Gets another first down for FAU. One, two, three, four tackles he made. Tackles he made miss him on that one. The flag on the play. Holding 68 on the offense. 10 yard penalty, replay third down. That goes against Nick Paris, the center for FAU. Yeah, Nick, and Nick Paris is not the best athlete on this offensive line. And he, he sometimes get out, gets out of position. And that's one of those plays where you want to have back because you have your running back have a great job, Charles Pierre, getting a nice positive yards, and it comes back 10 extra yards after a nice pickup. The Cavs on Nick Paris are incredible. I mean, that man has some legs that just are huge. 290 pounds. Doesn't move very well, but what he does is he gets the line and, and, and checks everything, and he's a, you know, a good, solid player in the middle. Look at those calves. I mean, those things are tree trunks. He's the vocal leader, and centers do so much more than they used to as far as calling things out. Smith to the outside through the hands of Cortez Ghent. Had him. Yeah. Well, very good block also by Diavri Ivory Edgecombe of taking pay, making sure George Selby couldn't come in. You're gonna see right at the bottom of your screen, and he works his way out. Good throw. Can't come away with it again. Another opportunity to pick up some yards. Wouldn't be a first down, but closer and maybe make a decision to go for it on fourth down. Keegan Peterson will punt it with a wind at his back, and that wind has just been continuous all afternoon, blowing off the ocean. FAU has been unable to take advantage. An angle kick. It goes out of bounds inside the 10. Let's see where they mark it. 
and it'll be right at the 10 yard line. That's where South Florida will start. A 44 yard punt, no return. They, they've missed some field goals, but the punting team's been pretty good. Well, with the wind at your back also, that's a perfect area to angle that kick. So let's see what Matt Grothy can do. And Charles, I enjoyed uh, reading the Palm Beach Post yesterday in the sports page, a big article on this South Florida team. And, and even if they go undefeated, would they get an opportunity to play in the BCS? And of course, you were quoted in that story. And I, I thought you said it right. I mean, their defense has been great, but we need to see more out of this offensive yeah, unit. They, they need to be more consistent. Even their coaches are saying the same thing. They have to do a better job of scoring points and being more effective offensively. Grothy has had time. Benjamin Williams out of the backfield. Picks up nine yards. Andre Clark on the stop. Uh, of course, South Florida making noise all across the state. Mike Bianchi from the Orlando Sentinel says, there's no denying it now. The best college team from our state is not Miami or FSU or the Gators. It's undeniably and unbelievably the University of South Florida, and that's no baloney. <laughs> I mean, isn't that the truth? To the outside it goes. First down. And, and Doug, if you say that in the moment, yes. But the other consistent thing is if they play Florida, which they will, if they, you know, if they play those teams, what would happen then? And I think that's what people in the whole state want to see. They want to see more of those matchups between those teams. We're live from Lockhart Stadium, an old stadium in Fort Lauderdale, just off Commercial Boulevard, which is the main drag to the beach. Doug Bell along with Charles Arbuckle, Melissa Knowles, South Florida in the top ten for the first time in their history. There's a turnover. FAU bringing it back. And out of bounds. Maury Small, his first interception, and it was a big one. See, Doug, this is what I was talking about in particular. South Florida has not had any turnovers today. FAU has had three. They're now 20 takeaways for the year. This is what they do so well. They built themselves like a South Florida to give them an opportunity. And that was a great job by Corey Small, the second interception of the year out of Naples, Florida, Gulf Coast High School. Now you have a chance. Your offense has to capitalize. Three turnovers for South Florida. It has resulted in no points so far for FAU. 28 yards on the return. FAU dropping eight, nine back in pass coverage. They're forcing Matt Grothy to beat him, and he hadn't shown that he can do that, not consistently. This is the third FAU drive that has started in South Florida territory. But this is where it gets real tough against this South Florida defense. Look at those guys inside. There's five white jerseys around the football. Six others within two yards. Moffitt is in the middle of the pile. And that's the problem with the offensive line for Florida Atlantic. you got to hold that block a lot longer. And the Ivory Edgecombe is getting hit before he even gets to the, to the line of scrimmage. The other thing, Doug, is that they just they feel like, hey, we have to take it upon ourselves. And if we have to stop you every single time, we will. Dan McCartney, the former Iowa State head coach, now the defensive line coach at South Florida. That's what he did at Iowa with Hayden Fry. That's his expertise. And that's one of the reasons the South Florida defensive front has played so well. That time, though, Alan Craig gets a little antsy. And of course, he's going to FAU saying, I got, I got pulled off. <laughs> well, that's the first thing you do. You point away from yourself. <laughs> Guys on the other side, no, you need to look in the mirror because I think it was you. <laughs> Coach McCarney has tons of energy. I can see why he and Coach Levitt get along so handsomely. Offside, 94 on the defense. Penalty will be half the distance, still second down. Four penalties for 25 against USF. Well, and the other thing is Tyrone McKenzie came over with him, 27, the linebacker. You're going to see Alan Cray, and then he's going to turn right away and say it was against Florida Atlantic. If you're, if you're FAU, you have to score here to make this game close and even again, and then you're in the ball game before half. Second and four for a first down. They need six for a touchdown. Right up wow. the gut goes B.J. Manley, and you have to be a man to go inside where Ben Moffitt lurks. And all those other big hosses. Hey, and it, you know, and they don't do anything fancy. Gary Nord said they're not going to change who they are. They're going to be very base in how they attack you. But it's hard to gain yards against them when they decide not to 
give you any yards. Ben Moffitt in the middle of all that because he has such good guys in front of him and this allows him to go in and make plays. Third down. FAU two out of five on third down conversions. They need two for the first. They're going wide this time, and I think they have six. They do. B.J. Manley. Touchdown, FAU. Flag down at the four-yard line. Rusty Smith has given us the ball. He knows it's holding. He heard holding. it. 88 on the offense. Ten-yard penalty for the previous spot. Replay third down. That's against Jason Harmon. Yeah, those are the kind of penalties that just hurt you. Manley, boy, he's frustrated. <laughs> he was pumped. Well, they've had to work so hard to get points on the board today. And to have a drive like that, and then now you get yourself 10 extra yards to work against. Here's Manley, 88 on the end. You can see him right there at the very top left of the corner of your screen. He's grabbed up on Carlton Williams. <laughs> Get those hands outside. As long as they're inside your body and the defender's body, you're all right. But if they get outside, that's hold. That was textbook. Yeah. That was a textbook hold. <laughs> that's the guy they show in the clinics at the end hey, of the That's year. like when you go shake the guy's hand, give him some, doubt, give him some love. No. <laughs> that was a hold. When you look it up in the dictionary, that's what holding is. Now third down at the goal line. Touchdown, FA. Against Mike Jenkins. That's the resiliency you see from this FAU ball club. Cortez Jen, he is another guy. When you turn on the film and you watch him play after play after play, he makes it. And this is an opportunity with Michael Jenkins, who's right on him. And you think there's no chance of him catching that football. But Rusty Smith with that sidewinder release. Look at it. What? Get the ball out. Uh, nice play. Nice throw and catch by those two. Jenkins nope. had good coverage. And there was no pressure also on Rusty Smith, which you thought third and long. Hey, they're coming after him. All right, Leroy's missed three field goals. Let's see if he can make an extra point. Someone from the end zone threw a red ball. Fans are throwing balls on the, on the field. Red, it was a little red throwaway ball. Big man on campus right now. Let's see if Leroy can tie it up. That's more like it. He's 15 out of 15 this year on PATs. And FAU, as we wind down the first half, I mean, this is a shocker. They're tied with USF. Well, the one thing that's not a shocker is that if USF let him let them stay around as long as they have and not been secure in the ball, holding on to the football, FAU is they're opportunistic as well. And they showed coming into today's game, when they played Minnesota, this is how they played, fast and furious. Kentucky was an aberration. They didn't play well against Kentucky. But they are really fired up and they're playing against. You know, Doug, how it is when you're playing against your cousin or your older brother, you want to beat them. You don't get a chance too often. And when you do, you get the chance to say, hey, I'm not so little. I'm not the little guy anymore. Rusty Smith right there egging his guys on. Come on, let's go out of Jacksonville, Florida. All these Floridians playing against each other, like I said. They play, they've known each other, they've read the clippings about this guy or that guy. Now they get a chance to do it on the field. It is a lively atmosphere here. I haven't got the officials no, uh, numbers, but I do believe it'll be the biggest to ever see an FAU game here at Lockhart Stadium. And I dare say there's more green then there is red. I think there's more South Florida fans here. This is one of those catch games when you go to, you know, after you have a big win like South Florida, you have to get re-energized and ready to play. And they're thinking, hey, we're playing a soccer field. You know, we're going to come out here and do this. You know, it took them four plays for the Atlantic to score. But the one thing you have to do is be ready every week because FAU is going to give you their best shot. FAU with a win in their back. A little dribbler fielded at the 28 brought back out to the 32 that was Richard Kelly backup fullback ran it back for USF uh, talked about offensively USF having the ability to score points and they you know just being more consistent 
They've given the ball away quite a bit today. Florida Atlantic finally capitalized. Now here's an opportunity to sort of half to try to come away with some points. Rosie. Well, a handoff to Benjamin Williams, who goes down in a sea of blue. Franz Joseph. He and Serge Sincere have been all over the place for the Owls. <laughs> If you see the ball carrier, you just see them. You talk about saran wrap. You got the saran wrap and then the Reynolds wrap on top of it. They, I mean, they are just swarming the football. This FAU defense is very impressive today. And they are fast. We they talk are. about how fast South Florida is. FAU has impressed me with their speed. And listen to the roar of the FAU crowd. They've never, ever been in this position before of beating a top 10 team and tied in half. South Florida, the big story, three turnovers. Rusty Smith, Cortez Gant, FAU in position. We're tied at halftime. Welcome back to Fort Lauderdale. No day at the beach for South Florida, now number six in the country, as they have struggled mightily against Florida Atlantic, the FAU Owls. Hi, everybody. Doug Bell alongside Charles Arbuckle. Yes, the South Florida fans were so fired up at the beginning of this contest. Now it's somewhat subdued. Our first half highlights, good start for South Florida. Former walk-on Benjamin Williams getting in for six. And then the missed opportunities for FAU just couldn't get it through. We give them a benefit of the doubt right there. Lee Worley Leroy, but the second two with the win to his back, got to make those. Frustrating day for a young man who came in eight out of ten on the season. And then the big pick, Corey Small, third turnover of the first half for South Florida. Well, and the biggest thing is they were getting those turnovers and not being able to capitalize, but they do there. Scoring with Cortez Gent on that play. Nice pass by Rusty Smith. And our first half numbers brought to you by Oxy. You see the turnovers and the points off. Well, you think you're Florida Atlantic. You've got to come away with points, and they only get seven. Had a chance to put another six on the board with the field goals that were missed, at least another six. So there, that was the story of the game right there. Points off of turnovers, but they are still going after the South Florida offense who gets the ball first to start the second half. Leroy will kick off 0 for 3 in field goals. The wind at his back. It's just been a wind that has just stayed right about 18 miles an hour all day. Jerome Murphy from the goal line. And boy, he gets nailed. Nice tackle there by Ted uh, Zaviga of FAU. Great special teams tackle. Well, FAU had really struggled in the kick return game, a kick coverage team, but they did an outstanding job there of getting down and covering. So South Florida, last four drives, they struggle mightily. You see only 25 yards, two turnovers, zero points. Greg Gregory, who we spoke with this week. If I see those guys dominate on defense, speaking to his team, I'm sure as heck not going to screw it up on offense, talking about why he's been somewhat conservative at times. But now they really have to be aggressive and attack because they're in a tie ball game. They need to score points. Grothy has good numbers completion-wise, hasn't thrown for a lot of yards. That time he carries it for eight over the left side. A couple of FAU players are down. Chris Bartles on the stop comes up rather gingerly. That's big 96, John Myrtleus. He got rolled up. You know, it's interesting, Buck, watching this defensive unit at FAU, oftentimes rushing just two on the outside, nine dropping back in pass coverage. West Virginia did a little bit of that also. They rushed three and dropped eight back. So they're forcing Matt Grothy to beat him, and he struggled with doing that. John Martellus. He got shaken up, and he's still down in the turf. In fact, they've uh, they're checking that foot of the lower leg. They will not take any chances. We talked a lot about South Florida's defense, and they are really good. Offensively, though, they still have some maturity to do, don't you think? And we'll talk uh, about that in just a moment. They're, they're going to help the young man off the field, and we'll take a break and come right back to Fort Lauderdale in just a moment. Jim Levitt, South Florida, sixth in the country, tied 7-7. John Martillis got 
shaken up a bit. Really got chopped, which happens a lot to defensive linemen when you're in the trenches there. They're checking his uh, left ankle out. He was helped off the field. That's never a good sign when a big man like that can't put pressure on his leg. Second down and short for the Bull. To the ground they go, and they get a first down. Benjamin Williams. Acevedo on the tackle for FAU. Here was the injury. Here's how it happened. Bottom of the screen, there's 96. Yep. Once he got chopped down, he didn't come, wasn't able to get back up. South Florida after the first down. Trying to get some momentum, a flow to their offense. And again, FAU drops nine back in pass coverage. That was completed to Jesse Hester, sincere on the tackle. Let's check in with the studio, Mike Gleason. All right, Glee, thank you. Second down for South Florida. Murphy will keep it himself behind his blockers. First down in FAU territory. Acevedo, another tackle. 14-yard pickup. Well, this is what he does effectively, Doug. Is he'll fake that inside play, and then they run a zone with him. He has a lead blocker with Cedric Hill, has some blocking out front. And then Grothy is able to just take that ball and do a very good job of running with it. Look at him and Acevedo. Acevedo's like, I almost got that ball out, man. <laughs> they were doing some talking. <laughs> Grothy now, six carries, 48 yards. That's darn good. Back to Benjamin Williams, up the gut. First down, South Florida. That big 300-pound offensive line is opening some holes. 11-yard pickup. Let's go down to the field, Melissa Knowles. Melissa? Coach Levin told me at halftime that the Owls, Owls were really able to control their offense for them and that they've got to do a better job of controlling their own, own offense and their own defense. And Coach Schellenberger said, you know what, I'm proud of my defense. They've been doing a really good job, but my offense has just got to put more points on the board. Guys? Yeah, they had those three missed field goals, missed opportunities that they're kicking themselves, literally, especially the kicker. And another first down, it appears, just short. Benjamin Williams, Bartles on the stop for FAU. Benjamin Williams running with a purpose. He really is, and it's off the defensive line for Florida Atlantic is a little bit banged up. Josh Pinnock and Josh Savage have been out, and then you have John Martellus, who got hurt just a little bit ago, is replacing. Now Jermaine Council is in there playing in place of those other two guys, so they're really attacking that defense. Williams this time over the left side. That's a first down. Devontae Jackson on the stop for FAU, but the chains are moving now for South Florida. And they're doing it on the ground. They struggle in the air, and now you know when that defense is tired. I mean, those guys are really holding themselves, trying to hold themselves up. You have all the hands on the hips, trying to get some extra air, and this South Florida offense is just really attacking them. Eighth play of the drive, seventh rushing play, Grothy. Dodges one bullet, falls forward for a first down. Acevedo, another tackle for FAU, and that's not good when your free safety is making all the tackles. Well, and it's also not good when it's your quarterback that's really killing you down the field. I mean, he is just able to do this inside zone, fake it there. You hold the defense, and look at those guys locked up outside Zach Herman and Cedric Hill out there getting them started. And once he goes, he's able to get up the field. Grothy with Williams to his right. Williams with a carry, gaping hole, touchdown South Florida. And Doug, that was set up by Grothy being able to run also. I think Williams might have gotten shaken up on that hit. He, got, he took a shot, but Grothy being able to run, you have the quarterback and the running back you have to respect. Florida Atlantic was worried. Watch here. Watch how the defense shifts over when they see Grothy. They have to hold their position. But Benjamin Williams, there was no one to touch him until he got in the end zone. And Acevedo laid a shot on him in the end zone. Yeah, he looks, looks a little shaken up there. Not as happy as you might be after a touchdown. He took a look from Acevedo. A nine-play, 76-yard mark. The extra point is good. And USF comes out with a purpose, setting the tone in the second half. Look out. They put the hammer down. Touchdown, Bulls.
First touchdown last six drives for the South Florida Bulls as they take a 14-7 lead. Let's go down to the sidelines. Melissa Knowles with a special guest. That's right. I am here with the president of FAU, and I need you to tell me what's going to happen in 2010. Well, of course, where we are today is exciting. We're a brand new startup football program. We've only been playing ball since 2001. But we've got a packed house today. We're taking on the number six team in the nation. What this does for our university is very tough to quantify. But the excitement, the exhilaration, and notoriety that it brings us is evident here today. So the Board of Trustees just approved a new stadium to be built. What will that do for this program? Well, bringing our new program onto the campus, the main campus of Florida Atlantic University, is going to do great things for our program. It'll be closer to home. We'll have 5,000 students. We'll be able to walk just across campus to the facility. And, of course, always being on campus brings you a great deal of excitement and notoriety as well. Thank you so much, President Brogan. Guys? Thank you very much. Go out. President Brogan, former lieutenant governor with Jeb Bush here in the state of Florida. And he's a dynamic speaker. And you, you felt that enthusiasm come through the screen. FAU has several campuses. Uh, of course, the one with the athletic facility where they'll have the football stadium is just down the highway in Boca. Against the wind, the kick is short. FAU, little fumble and fumble. Breaking free, getting out to the 41 yard line. The Ivory Edge come. Doug, I don't have an exact science or percentage on this, but whenever a guy, a returner, bobbles the ball, it always seems to make the coverage team slow down and relax just a little bit. And that allows him, if he picks it up cleanly, this is what usually happens. He's able to get more yards than normal. They don't have a very good return game here. They only average 19.5 yards, FAU. But that time, he was able to pick up about 35 yards just because the recovery team relaxed. Great field position. Again, the wind at their back. A significant breeze off the ocean. Let's see if they take advantage in this third quarter. William Rose goes over the left side. Runs into big Richard Klaybert. The history of this FAU program, Howard Schnellenberger took over in 1998. Hired four guys that was his first staff. They had their first outdoor practice August 29. They practice indoors on the 28th because of a thunder shower. Their first game and then their first football team. And Howard Schnellenberger has a plaque in the end zone of the practice field that has the name of everybody who's stuck around for the first four years. And they want to go big time with their football program. Smith, that ball gets batted and intercepted. Ben Moffitt batted up in the air. No interception. It hit the turf. Dante Spires was there. Would have been his first interception. Ben Moffitt just Johnny on the spot. Always around the football. You know, Ben Moffitt trying to work for his teammate. Help Dante Spires get the pick. That's the way it's taught. Knock that ball up. So to bring up a third down as you look at Ben Moffitt. There he is, Buck. Just, I mean, he, he, he could almost take it out to the house if he did. caught it. Had two picks last week against West Virginia. And uh, it's under review to see yeah. whether or not he caught it or not. What do you think? Did he get his hands underneath it? Doesn't look like it on the replay, but let's see it again. We are providing the replays now for the replay booth, so you'll see what the man upstairs sees. Dante Spires, second year man out of Plant High School in Tampa, tried to get his hands underneath it. Did he do it? Nope. Oh, the ball hit the ground. Hit the ground. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty easy one to call on that one. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Incomplete pass. The ball hit the ground. Third down. Well, Doug, you talk about Howard Schnellenberger. He said they practiced a scrimmage that first year every single Saturday. They would bring up temporary bleachers so people could come out. He said they practiced pep rallies and bonfires. He went old school. He went back to the old days where they would have a, he said he got on the stump in the, in the cafeteria. Nobody paid attention to him. They threw food at him. <laughs> Is this guy talking football third and six first down FAU boy that was a beautiful pass Trey Williams on the stop 
I've been impressed by Rusty Smith 10 yards in the past. The I've been impressed by the receivers also doing a very good job against some very solid cornerbacks. Trey Williams another good cover man good closing speed. You have Mike Jenkins who's ranked the number one cornerback by Mel Kuyper. But these guys for the Atlantic have attacked the secondary. Cortez Jen already has a touchdown. Now four catches for 46 yards. Uh oh. Smith lost the handle on the snap and falls on it. Let's check in with Mike Gleason in the studio. Mike. All right, Chuck Amato now on the FSU staff had beaten Bobby Dunn four times and now on the opposite sidelines. Emotional day for him. First down FAU, BJ Manley. 12 yards. Nate Allen on the stop for the Bulls. You know, they're doing such a good job. And I, I can tell you right here, look inside. Good blocking by William, Willie Rose again. But that interior, they're locking guys up and they're allowing B.J. Manley or Charles Pierre a chance to get into the secondary and do some damage. They're doing a very good job of giving, creating space. Manley with four carries, 18 yards, first and 10. FAU keeping his drive alive. Back to the fullback. William Rose busting to the outside. He's knocked out of bounds. But another first down for the Owls, 15 yards for William Rose. Nice block there by David Matlock. And usually the fullback, you don't think they run a lot. He has 21 rushes on the year. But watch Big 72 creating some space in there. And Willie Rose showing some speed at 6'1", 227, getting down the field. They're attacking the South Florida defense and answering the bell. They gave up a touchdown, but now they're coming back, giving them a dose of their own medicine. Rusty Smith, the sophomore from Jacksonville, Florida. Trying to lead his team in for the tying touchdown here in the third quarter. Beautiful day in Fort Lauderdale. Back to the fullback left side. Rose still on his feet out of bounds at the five-yard line. 15-yard pickup. Trey Williams saves the touchdown. Let's give Brandon Jackson and Jared Smith a lot of kudos on that play. Allowing Willie Rose, watch the left side, left tackle, and Jared Smith, the left guard, and then you have the puller, David Matlock, coming around. But Willie Rose is showing some ability here. Watch, locking guys up, getting them a handle on them and not letting them get off of you. The white jerseys were covered up by the blue, and that's why you saw big Willie Rose, two consecutive carries, the same similar play. Rose in there at fullback, B.J. Manley the tailback. FAU outgaining South Florida, 226 to 223. Smith into the end zone. Jason Harmon. You know, David Noor talked about him. He said, if we get inside the red zone, this kid out of Tampa, Florida is going to show you something. He was an outstanding basketball player in high school, baseball. He was a three-sport athlete. But watch this play here, Jason Harmon, and a, a talented individual who's a little undersized at tight end. But watch this. Wow. That's a rebound guy going up like Antonio Gates, making, getting it at the highest point. He's playing a Tampa based team like he wants to show folks at home what they're missing. Riverview High School in Tampa. The extra point is good into the student section of FAU. And the Owls from the Sun Belt tied up with a beast of the Big East, sixth ranked South Florida. Well, Doug, when you give yourself a chance to stay in the ball game like Florida Atlantic did, these are the plays that you can make. You see Jason Harmon. Smith with time because they had run the ball so effectively the play fake held the defense that allowed him to get back there in that corner of the end zone the tight end loves this a corner route on whoever's covering you whether it's a linebacker or a safety you know you beat him to that pylon quarterback throws it up to six points eight plays 59 yards just over two minutes and Buck we saw the adjustment South Florida made as FAU drops all those players back in pass coverage. Of course, they just ran the ball right down their throat. FAU's going to have to adjust now. Well, in that last drive, they stopped dropping everybody back after about three or four plays. But FAU, I mean, they were still getting gashed. But this time now, Florida Atlantic came back on offense and said, OK, we can run the football as well. And they marched right down the field. Willie Rose was a big part of that. Let's find out the latest on John Martellus of FAU went out with that injury. Melissa? Just a moment ago, he was up walking around, but he was limping. He had his shoe back on. Now, as you can see, he's sitting back up. He's got the shoe off, and he's got it propped up. I asked him, how's he feeling? He said, I'm in a lot of pain. Guys? Probably finished for the day. Jerome Murphy. 
sprints out to the 39 before anybody really touched him. Nice return, good field position for South Florida. There's Martellus uh, with the ice on. That's he's probably done for the day. That's so. a sign where you're, you're shutting it down. Yep. Got to cool the motors off. He was uh, really having a fine afternoon before that chop block just rolled up that ankle. And it's amazing how quickly the ankle swells. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't stop it. Let's see what South Florida number six in the country can do against this FAU defense. That time, they brought more people up to stop Grothy. Franz Joseph on the stop. Of course, the last couple of weeks, we've had lots of upsets and big time college football. You see last week, number three, four, five, seven, and 10 go down. This week, Wisconsin's already gone down. Well, and if South Florida isn't careful, they can go down as well. You know, you, you, it's, it's totally different when you come in an atmosphere like this and there's a player, a young player, you got to get your mindset right, and they have not done that, South Florida has. FAU's gone back to four down linemen. Incomplete. Almost bounced in the hands of Serge Sincere. And that's Sincere, the senior from Belglade. And it, when they hand out game balls at the end, he's going to get one. Well, I mean, he's just always around the football. Whenever you, you know, talk about this South Florida Atlantic defense, he just seems to be around and making plays. I thought he had that interception. Couldn't pull it in. Bounce right to him. Third down and nine. Grothy has time, but better look out. Breaks the tackle. Goes down short. Now have to put the football. Get Franz Joseph was there. Javante Jackson for FAU. Everybody was covered. They're playing at a high level of intensity. That last drive, they just got manhandled by South Florida, but came back on that one and showed some resilience. And made Grothy try to hurt him, and they couldn't do it. He had that first run, and then after that, almost threw an interception, and then they had to tuck the ball in and try to pick up the first down. Alvarado, his fourth punt of the afternoon. Tavius Polo standing back at the 18. Line drive into that win. That will bound into the end zone. 55-yard punt into the win. That's what South Florida needed. FAU takes over the 20 when we come back. The last drive for the FAU Owls is started with a bumbled kickoff return, but Edgecombe turns it into positive yard. Really does. Gets a very good return and then gives Willie Rose an opportunity to run that football effectively on that drive, showing you some, some versatility from the fullback position. And then the play fake gets everybody in. And if you're a tight end, you love this position to be. Even if it's a safety like Carlton Williams, you can get behind him and catch that touchdown for six. ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate and the sixth ranked team in the nation. The fastest team to ever excel to the top 10. South Florida right now back on their heels. Hey, it was made up perfectly for Florida Atlantic. They can have them coming into their house, a small venue, very intimate and cozy. Fans right up on top of you. Rusty Smith has been very calm today. Throws to the outside, dangerous pass, goes incomplete. Let's check into the studio and Mike Gleason. Glee. All right, some big games going on, including ours right now. South Florida, FAU. Rusty Smith on the draw play. Going nowhere, Charles Pierre. Getting penetration was Aaron Harris and Richard Klaber. Well, and this is FAU's home field, but in that end zone is where a lot of, all of the South Florida fans are, as well as their band. So they were really loud. Usually when you're at home, you can get the crowd to quiet it, quiet down. But look at this defense flying to the football again. Last drive, they got pushed around and came back this time and wanted to show their metal. There's the band. A festive atmosphere here in Fort Lauderdale. It's been a party all day long. We got a heck of a football game. Uh-oh. That was almost an interception. Jason Harm did a nice job just to keep that ball from getting picked off. It does. We haven't heard from George Selby. Trey Williams almost had a chance at that ball. You made a great point. Jason Harmon gets in and knocks the ball away. He became the defender. 
But George Selby has been quiet today. They've done a good job of keeping him out of the picture. Gary Nord talking to his quarterback. You can read his lips. He said, just throw it out of bounds. <laughs> Don't mess around. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that was dangerous. Burn that ball. Get rid of it. Keegan Peterson. Another Tampa kid, Riverview High School, will punt it away for FAU. Wind at his back, but that is not a good kick. Whoa. That ball was fielded at the 47 by Marcus Edwards, a 36-yard punt, and he gets hit immediately. Doubleheader tonight on ESPNU starting at 7 Eastern. It's Tulane against the Black Knights of Army, 10 Eastern, Maine against Hofstra. Primetime college football presented by City on ESPNU. And don't forget tomorrow on the ice, it's Clarkson, seventh in the country against St. Lawrence. College hockey only on ESPNU Sunday at 4 Eastern. Terrific field position, 46 yard line for the South Florida Bulls. Grothy keeps it himself. He's wrestled out by Gil Monzon. This South Florida offense, Buck, reminds you a little bit of the Gators offense. Yeah, they, you know, and, and they use a quarterback a lot to run. But I'll tell you another interesting thing, a good stat. South Florida is just two of six in the month of October since 2004. That reminds me when we did that game a few years ago, they beat Louisville in September, and then they came down to Miami and ended up getting beat pretty bad by the, the uh, Hurricanes. 10 carries, 70 yards for Grothy. This time he hands off to Benjamin Williams. We got shaken up a bit after that touchdown run, but Bartels brings him down after another first down. 10-yard pickup for Benjamin Williams. Well, and it's a bad sign when you have both of your safeties having to come up and make tackles. Good push by that offensive line, and Bartels is a strong safety, and Tahim Acevedo is the free safety. 12 carries, 72 yards for Williams. Have not seen Mike Ford today. Out to the outside, Amari Jackson. Keeping his feet moving. Nice play by the young man. You know, he had a, a breakout game a few years ago against Louisville, and it's maybe not gone to him. And that's a good throw for Matt Grothy. Getting him an easy, it's basically a long handoff. And Amari Jackson is so good with yards after the catch. He showed his ability there. Mike Ford fumbled in the last football game. Could be sending the young man a message. Got to hold on to it. That was a good stick. Benjamin Williams then falls forward like good running backs do after the initial hit. That was a good stop by Bartels coming up from that safety position. They got him in the box now trying to take away the run. That's the adjustment that they've had to make. And he was right there on the end of the line of scrimmage and actually had him for a loss. So now it's third and about two yards. FAU has four down linemen. That has not been the case most of the day. Trying to stop the run. The outside. Williams slips and falls. I think he's going to be short of the mark. And he will be. It'll bring up fourth down about a half a yard. I think you got to go for it here. What do you think? I think so. Field goal kicker's been somewhat he's, shaky this he's, season. You're going to be kicking into the wind. Yep. Be a long kick. Room. And you've ran the ball effectively in the second half. You've got a quarterback who can run the ball. Right, he did not get a good mark, so this is a long yard. Grothy. Williams. Grothy keeps it himself. Great fake. First down. Grothy still on his feet. Skips into the end zone. What a run, Matt Grothy. Wow. That was beautiful. Well, this is the reason why. You got a guy like Grothy, who has just got a great ability to win ball games. 12 to 4, 12 wins, 4, to 4 losses, 75% winning percentage. Doesn't always do it pretty, but on that run, it was nice. That was pretty. 32 yards. Check out Grothy. A great fake, number one, sets it up. It sets everybody over there. You can see the defenders don't, the camera can't find them, the guys can't find them, but good blocking. Marcus Edwards with a nice block out there. And this defense was tired at that point also. Alvarado on for the extra point. Kicks it right into the South Florida section. And the sixth ranked team in the country on top now, 21 14. Grothy goes to 101 yards on the ground. 
You've seen Tim Tebow four to several times on TV this year, and I tell you, Buck, Grothy looks looks very, very good. Yeah, he does, and he finds a way to win, and you think, hey, he can't pull that off, but fourth and short, excellent opportunity right there to push the ball down and get a first down, but usually that's when you have a chance because everybody's up close. Once you break that line, there's no second or third level. FAU now. They, they need to respond they because do. right now it, it's like a boxing match. Yeah. They take it a blow and they're they're staggered. But they did that the last time. They came right back. You're going to see it again. Grothy. The play fake brings about nine defenders over there, though, so there's no one there. And then once he makes a move and gets around, and there's good blocking by the receivers. Amari Jackson there to escort him in at the very end. Grothy with that mohawk. Check it out. 101 yards on the ground, not a bad average, huh? 9.2. Pretty good stuff. Edgecombe from the two-yard line. Looking for a space. Keeps those legs pumping. Gets it up to the 35. Matt Grothy making a name for himself on the national scene. And he's been very accurate. He, he, he has been, but he had he struggled with the ball down the field. Jesse Hester Jr. right there with a nice catch. But when he's not able to throw the football, he resorts to his legs, which, you know, if you close your eyes on that run, you would think, is that Steve Young reincarnated? <laughs> not lefty and clearly not as talented long-term as Steve Young, but he shows you innate ability to win ball games. Let's see if Rusty Smith can answer. He's more of a passer with a pump fake going deep to Jen. No flags there. That ball wasn't catchable. Goes out of bounds. Well, Jen couldn't have caught it either. He couldn't have been the first guy to touch it because he was out of bounds and came back in. That's why the official threw his hat down. But, you know, very good job by Trey Williams of pushing him out of bounds, just riding him out of bounds, so to speak. Rusty Smith at six feet five. Has great vision. That's what the coach is like. He's tall. He can really go through the sequence of his receivers, and we've seen that today. Can he lead his team back again? Edgecombe goes over the right side. Runs into a couple of white shirts. Richard Flavert is always there. George Selby got in there. That front four active. Yeah, Flavert, man. <laughs> out of Miami Edison. Yeah, he's always around the football for an interior guy. Doesn't make a lot of tackles. Only had 12 on the year, but his push inside. Selby has only one sack today. They've done a very good job of neutralizing him, not letting him just get off with that quick first step. Four out of 12 on third downs for FAU. Selby puts the pressure. It's caught in a first down. It's still going. Whoa! Jason Harmon down to the 30 yard line. Oh my gosh. Do you want to get on the scene? He this just, is how you do it. He leaped over the defender at 33 I, I told yards. You. Pass and catch. I told you he was an outstanding athlete. Only about 212, 215 pounds, more of an H back type in the league. But I tell you, on the college scene, this is unbelievable. Breaks the tackle. Watch this. Wow. <laughs> what a play. I mean, look at this. Man, and then after that, being able to come down and make a move on the other side over Nate Allen. First and 10 from the 30. The Owls making the noise back to Rose, the fullback. What a weapon he is as he barrels forward to the first down marker. Picks up nine, it'll be just short. Well, Doug, you almost have a thunder and lightning, so to speak, with the Manly or Pierre, Pierre being the quicker guys, but then when you give it to Rose or Edgecombe, even though Edgecombe is listed as a fullback, he runs very well. They got a great tandem of running backs, FAU does. Seven carries, 46 yards for Rose, the redshirt sophomore. Rusty Smith checking at the line. Gives it to the fullback. First down. Rose breaks a tackle. Carries the defender down to the 10-yard line. Off from there, 
on the stop for South Florida after he got drunk a few yards. Well, they've done a very good job of starting to the right side of their line and then breaking it back to the other side, especially in this area on the boundary side. And watch, they just have guys out front blocking. Once Rose makes one person miss, he's back in the secondary. Nate Allen can't get him. He's just, that's the same play that they had so much effectiveness on in that last drive where they scored. for Rose. Red zone alert for FAU. Oh, in and out of the hands of Jamari Grant. Jamari was looking for the end zone before he pulled it in. Yeah, didn't put it away. Hey, Buck, you're an old tight end. You know what he's going through there, don't you? <laughs> he was trying to get that pass and turn up the field before he had it. Coach Schnellenberger. Of course, he played the great Bear Bryant. Plant Collier, coach with Bear Bryant, coach with Don Shula. You know, he calls these games advanced training games, because if we must advance, we must play these games. It's not just about the money, but learning how to win these ball games. Rusty Smith to the outside. Jason Harmon trying to continue being on the highlight reel, well, can come up with Allen. But that was uh, Rusty Smith's fault right there. And, and it's a little bit of Harmon getting Harmon getting a little tired. He had a guy deep as well. Wide open in the back of the end zone. Not really wide open, but open a little bit more. But if he had just put a little air on it, Harmon would have came open even more so. Eighth play of the drive. Smith won for his last six. William Rose has been a weapon is to his right. Smith with time. To Jason Harmon, five-yard pickup. No, that was a bullet. <laughs> I was wondering if Harmon was going to catch that. Watch how fast this ball gets to you. You can come in your living room. Woo! And that's slow motion. And the fans are booing because they have seen three missed field goals today. A little bit closer this time. 22 yards, virtually an extra point for Leroy, who's 15 of 16 of 16 in extra points this year. And he nails it, so he's one out of four today. Two touchdowns and a field goal, last four offensive possessions for FAU. Number six is in a little bit of trouble. Let's find out about another team who's highly ranked, Mike Gleason. Rivalry are being recruited just like the Floridians here. Oklahoma gets down, and when they when, when you played them in 1986, when I was at UCLA, they had 10 of their 11 starters on defense were from Texas. And whenever Oklahoma's good, they're getting 55 to 60 kids on their roster that are from the state of Texas because there's so much talent down there, similar to how Florida, how they were able to sustain now Florida Atlantic, South Florida. That Red River rivalry is unbelievable. First half, eight possessions. You see the numbers. Second half, three possessions, two touchdowns. The offense is churning now. Jim Levin grew up in the Tampa St. Pete area. Short kick, great field position by South Florida. That was Brandon McGee who come up, came up with it. That's not what FAU was hoping for. And Howard Schnellenberger pulled Warley Leroy off right away. He wouldn't even let him go to the trainer because he was kind of acting like something was wrong. Pulled yeah, he, him to the sideline right away and wanted to talk to him. He's holding uh, his side as if maybe he strained a muscle or something, Leroy, on the sidelines. Yeah, but Schnellenberger didn't want any of that. Yeah. He wanted to talk to him right away. <laughs> He's like, hold on, let's have a little conversation here. Like your dad, when you're little, you're trying to evade him, trying to get away from him. He can find you. Best starting field position of the game for South Florida. Benjamin Williams has been a workhorse today. And once again, Franz Joseph on the stop for FAU. It's either Joseph or Sincere virtually yeah. every time for FAU. <laughs> I mean, they are they Sincerely are Joseph. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Man, they are all over. And these linebackers have really shown very similar to South Florida's defense and how they play. Fly to the football, cause turnovers. We saw Martillis on the sidelines, done for the day. 
Grothy looks to the sidelines. Grothy and Williams have been quite a one-two punch. And they're going to wait for the final seconds to tick away. And now the wind at their back now. Jim Levitt, four fingers up. The fourth quarter is ours, boys. That's what he's saying. We have had quite a game at Fort Lauderdale. We have one quarter to play. South Florida, FAU, putting on a show. All right, Glee, thank you. South Florida not wasting any time. Second down. Leading 21-17, start of the fourth quarter. Grunty, over 100 yards. Add 10 more to that. Matt Grothy putting on the show in the second half. He's really being effective with putting that ball in there, letting Williams go the other way and take the ball around the edge. They've done a very good job of making adjustments in this half. For South Florida, it was just a matter of getting back to basics. They have a terrific offensive line, all over 300 pounds, all moved very well for big guys. And Grothy and Benjamin Williams have just taken charge. Wind at their back now, some 18 miles per hour, blowing off the ocean, and he shoots out of it. Wow. It's like he was shot out of the backfield. Loose football. FAU says they have it. So they never give up on plays, Doug. This will be the this fourth FAU, turnover of the day. This FAU defense never gives it up is. on plays. FAU football. They don't give up on plays. That's how they were able to get that out. And they all fly to the football. South Florida is known for that. But today, we've seen FAU come after. Now, he has a great run. And watch it. Don't give up on plays. You have Acevedo working to get it out. You also have Corey Small that's at the bottom of that screen. And they both force that fumble after he gets stopped up. Watch right there. Both of those guys, 26 and 9. And then you also have the big guy coming up, Jermaine Council. Whenever a big guy comes from that far back to make a tackle, it just causes havoc. They're going to review that, Charles, because I'm not so sure his knee wasn't down before Previous he coughed it up. Even if it's overturned, just the hustle of 94-26. Watch, you're going to see on your screen. His knee is down knee and then is the down. ball comes out. I do believe his left knee was down before yep. it shot out. Watch his left knee. If you had a, another angle on the other side to see if the ball is even coming out, but you can see Big 94 hitting him late, and that's where the ball kind of pops out. Boy, it's going to be close. But I'm not sure the video, the angle that we have shows yeah. it definitively. But once again, just a hustle play. Look at your main counsel coming from about 20 yards. From that angle, it looked yeah, like it was it, loose. It, and that's what I thought. Acevedo was there. You also had Corey Small. That's a turnover. That other angle showed you better where it was. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. First down. Randy Smith of the Big East Conference with the call in Jim Levitt, who has just absolutely perspired through his shirt and his pants. He's been working hard on the sidelines, as he always does. Dismayed at the fourth turnover of the day. This is what they were worried about, coming into a, a trap game. You know, you're coming into a small environment. You're used to playing in this big stadium. You just won in front of 68,000. When you come to this, you got to be ready. Randy Smith to the outside. It's back just past the line of scrimmage. That was Cortez Gent who caught the touchdown in the first half. And Smith has done a very good job of moving the ball around. And they've caught, Gary Nord has just caught some great plays today as well. They've gone with the hot hand. Willie Rose was hot for a while. They kept giving him the football, using different personnel groupings. And it's really gotten South Florida's defense off balance. Second down and nine, Rusty Smith has been sharp on this Saturday afternoon at Fort Lauderdale with time. It's another first down, FAU. Chris Bonner, his first catch of the day. Here's how we got here so far, second half. South Florida, Matt Grothy, take a charge. Came out at the half and just 
really ran the ball very effectively. And then Williams, watch, he's going to get hit here at the end. But before that, he comes in. And then Big Willie Rose running the ball effectively inside. Right here, Jason Harmon, one of his spectacular highlight reel catches. And that's where we are. To the ground, Charles Pierre. Now that's the swarming South Florida defense that we've seen on tape here the last month. Oh, yeah. And that time you come in the boundary, and if you dance a little bit and you can't turn those shoulders up the field, you'll have big Jared Bowie coming to hit you, Bruce Mompick, Premier, Nate Allen, and also Mike Jenkins. That's the one thing these corners don't get a lot of credit for. They will come up and force and fill. Mike Jenkins and Dre Trey Williams do a very good job of turning things back inside as cornerbacks. Second down and 12. Those are the numbers for Rusty Smith. Second year quarterback out of Jacksonville. Straight back with time over the middle. Intercepted South Florida. Trey Williams, the all Big East quarterback, was right there. Going into the win, he tried to put more on it. The ball got batted down by that win, so to speak. Trey Williams in the perfect position. We talked about good closing speed, good makeup. This is a gimme. Rusty Smith trying to get it back in that deep area. Look, the ball just kind of flutters away over the top of the receiver, Cortez Gent. Talked about the funny arm action. Gets it way too high. Trey Williams was able to come down with that football. He had time, too. Didn't have to rush it. Had the receiver open. Just tried to overthrow it through that win. First big mistake for Rusty Smith. Lockhart Stadium is just loaded up with green and gold. Lots of South Florida fans watching Grothy bust it to the outside with a stiff arm or two. Out of bounds, Matt Grothy. Let's check in with the studio. All right. Keep us posted on that. Second down now for USF. 204 yards on the ground for the Bulls. Trying to tack on some more with Benjamin Williams. And he does. It's a first down. Boy, Williams like a bowling ball out there. Cedric Hill had an outstanding block on Serge and Sear. And that's what sprang that play. We talked about Serge and Sear. Watch 45 come up on the edge and nine. Boom. Hit him again. Boom. Then he's going to try to go find somebody else. Good blocking right there by Cedric Hill, number nine. We watched a lot of tape, and that's the one thing we've noticed. The wide receivers do get out and block for South Florida. And he's a... He's, made into a tight end now 240 pounds and he does a great job of blocking Williams to the outside <laughs> terrific tackle by Chris Bartels and that's another thing we've seen both teams good tackling teams hey, if you want to want to see what rivalries look like this could be shaping up to be a very good one Lord Atlantic a few years back got beat by South Florida they handled them but now they've learned. They said, okay, we got some more talent. We're recruiting against you guys. We're not going against the big threes recruiting. But we're gonna, they're going head-to-head, -head, getting some of the same type of players. South Florida is wearing them down, it appears. FAU, players with hands on their hips, breathing heavy. Incomplete on second down. It'll bring up third and long. Intended for Jesse Hester. His dad was the terrific receiver at Florida State. Played in the NFL, and Hester yeah. caught the winning touchdown against Auburn in overtime. Took last year off to get bigger and stronger. Came back after a red shirt year. He's been making some nice plays. Played with his dad at Indianapolis. Jesse Hester Sr. was an outstanding, but great route run. Set up routes very well. Grothy looks to the sidelines. All set. This will be the fifth pass attempt in the second half for South Florida. Grothy find himself some time. The dump off to Cedric Hill. And he's short of the first down. Uh-oh. You hear a South Florida player. He's down and he is hurt. Boy. Yeah, hate to hear that. That is big Ryan Schmidt. And he is in pain. Yeah. He is hurt. Yeah, the rain's starting to come down as well. Let's go! Big clouds. They went out of the game earlier. 
Must have gotten rolled up again. There he is running down the field in front of Hill. Let's see right there. Council tackling Hill and gets his leg caught up under him. Starting to rain a bit now, Lockhart Stadium. These big clouds are hovering above the stadium. Jim Levin and his sixth ring Bulls trying to hang on and perhaps put this one away with a march now into the end zone. But it is fourth down, and we'll be back in just a moment as the rain starts to fall in South Florida. We'd like to welcome the audience from the FSU NC State game. We understand bad weather in Tallahassee has delayed that game. It's fourth down for South Florida. And they are in a draw with FAU. Grothy over 100 yards keeps it himself. It depends on the mark. This is going to be very close. <laughs> Obviously, both teams are saying they stopped him or they got it. And they stopped they the FAU. Even, yeah. They didn't even bring out the nope. chain. Franz Joseph again with the big play. Joseph said if we can get him to play at another level, he's playing well. But these are the kind of plays that define you, being in the moment. Right there. That defense stood up well. He was stopped a little bit by Avisado, but then Franz Joseph comes up and makes the stop. FAU fired up Jim Levitt, hoping his defense can make another stand. The highest ranked team in the state of Florida, clinging to a four point lead over the FAU Owls. Edsko in the slot gets drugged down from behind. Dangerous tackle by Tyrone McKenzie. Can't do that in the NFL. We haven't called McKenzie's name a whole lot today. Out of Riverview, Florida. Transfer from Iowa State. But good closing speed and just takes him down. Hog ties him. First down to the Owls of FAU. Tied for first in the Sun Belt Conference. Going nowhere is B.J. Manley. You saw the speed. Ben Moffitt came up. Moffitt has had another quality start for USF. Big Allen Prey inside, big 94. And what they're doing now is they're trying to rotate guys in to make sure they don't get tired. This FAU offense has, has done a very good job of staying on the ground and it's forcing those D linemen. They can't just get off and go after the passer. They have to respect the running game as well. Second down and 11. Smith. Quick pass to the outside, and that goes incomplete. On every play, Doug, they're also not allowing Selvi to get his hands up. He's going to talk to the umpire about it a little bit, but each time they have a quick play, watch right here, outside quick. Selvi don't see him, but he's cut down. Receiver doesn't come up with the, the reception. That's Lester Jean, the freshman out of Miami, Florida, who has eight catches on the year. He has a great ability to make some guys miss. Has a tendency to take his eye away from the football sometimes, but very talented receiver. Five of 14 on third down conversions, two out of four in the second half. With time to the outside. Had his man an overshot, Shario yeah. Johnson. Rusty Smith was throwing that ball way before Johnson even got out of his break. And I don't know if Johnson ran the route wrong. He had the, had the time. But watch, he's throwing the ball, and usually the receiver's turning his head, but Johnson hadn't even started his break. Hadn't even broken out of his route. Timing on that route was not good. Keegan Peterson will punt into the stiff breeze. Marcus Edwards back at the 27 for the Bulls. Peterson has done a nice job today. FSU come or FAU comes up with it. So let's check the penalty. He ran into his own man. This could be a huge yeah. turn of events. 22 is Ryan down. Brilliant. Kick catch interference. Kicking team. The 15 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. That goes against FAU. I want to see the replay on that. <laughs> and 
popping right up is Ryan Gilliam. You know, the funny thing about that, you can almost hear a whistle seem to blow before the kick even got off. That was his own man. He ran into his own man. Marcus Edwards ran into him. Watch, watch this. Gilliam ran right into Edwards. Coach Schnellenberger is asking for review. I, I don't think that's reviewable. No, and that's the, the thing. Clearly, his man wasn't pushed into him. He's upset about that one. Yeah. Listen to this. You're going to hear a whistle, which I thought I heard, too. Yeah. Grothy back to the ground. Benjamin Williams. Spins off a tackle. Benjamin Williams looking for a block on the outside. Shifted into fifth gear. Benjamin Williams won't go down. Touchdown, South Florida. A spectacular 54-yard run by Benjamin Williams. The, wow. We used to like to call these sudden change plays, whether they come by the air or come by the ground. And Benja Benjamin Williams, who had a great Papa John's.com bowl game, MVP of that game, came back right away. As soon as you get an ability to get a sudden change, the defense is relaxed and watch right here. Just good blocking. But the move by Benjamin Williams and to go the other way. Here's a former walk-on, folks, who is now starred for South Florida. Look at the block down there by Amari Jackson. All of those receivers do a good job of blocking downfield. Alvarado on for the extra point. And it's good. South Florida now up by 10. Benjamin Williams. They know him in Tampa. He's saying, hey, USA, here I am. Simeon Castile saves the day for the Crimson Tide. Oh, if Alabama had lost at home. Houston, no doubt. Well, there's the man right now, Big Ben Williams, 157 yards, three touchdowns on the day. Most of that coming in the second half. Kick goes deep into the end zone, and FAU will come out to the 20. We have seen some terrific individual runs. I mean, that little spin movie made. Wow, that was unbelievable. You, you thought you wouldn't stop Jason Harmon's leaping over a defender and spinning, but Benjamin Williams comes back. And all set up by good blocking downfield by the receivers. When you're struggling in the passing game, if you can have long home run type runs like that, that just helps your offense. Benjamin Williams, all smiles, came in 124 yards on the season coming into today. And as we mentioned, 157 on the day. Mike Ford hasn't played at all for South Florida. And early on, Jamar Taylor went to the sidelines with an injured ankle. Back to the ground. Edgecombe for FAU. Let's check in with Melissa on the sidelines. Ryan Schmidt came off the field wincing in pain. And you know what, guys? It doesn't look like he's going to go back in. They were looking at his left ankle and trying to get him to wiggle his toes. And now they've got ice on it. So I think he's done for the game, guys. Melissa, thank you. We've seen several players now on the sidelines with ice on the ankles. Jim Levitt, you know he's not breathing any easier. Not until that final tick. And then that's when he starts focusing on next week. You know, oh, loose football. William Rose jumps on it right at the line of scrimmage to bring up third down. Doug, let's look how far Florida Atlantic has come. 0-2 all-time versus ranked football bowl subdivision teams, getting outscored by 115 to 16 in the process. This, I know they don't want moral victories, but much closer ball game today. And if that muff punt hadn't gone the other way, we may be talking about them right back in the ball game. Third down and short for Rusty Smith, keeping it himself. His first carry of the game. The big six foot five quarterback tries to lean in there, but depends on the mark, and I think he got it. Yep, first down, FAU. Don't forget, two more games tonight on ESPNU. Tulane and Army immediately after our game. 
and then Maine and Hofstra at 10 Eastern. Saturday primetime college football presented by City on ESPNU. Well, that rain came through quickly and just yeah. got out of here, didn't it? Like earlier. Two minutes and then gone. It's a gorgeous South Florida evening. Smith to the outside. Completes that pass to Gent. Mike Jenkins was there in the coverage for the Bulls. Doug, I'm telling you, that release, if you're a receiver, you have, have to get used to it. These guys are used to playing with him, so they know how it's going to come out. But you're always looking, sometimes through the shoot. He's a 6'5 guy, but he, the way he brings his arm slot down makes him about 6'2 or 6'3. So sometimes that ball just comes out <laughs> out of those helmets of the offensive line, and you've got to just be ready to catch it. Second down for the Owls. Still lots of time on the clock. Charles Pierre goes for another first down. Nate Allen makes the tackle for South Florida. Well, Richard Claiborne had a chance to get him in the backfield, and he was able to good second, third effort. We're live from Lockhart Stadium in Fort Lauderdale. It's the home of the FAU Owls. Doug Bell alongside Charles Arbuckle, Melissa Knowles on the sidelines. It's been an action-packed game, some great individual performances. South Florida decided just to buckle the chin staff real tight and just start running the football. That's what they've done, mostly downhill here in the second half. Six play of the drive. Batted down by who else? Ben Moffitt. <laughs> Always around the football. And I bet you when he was born, he had a football in his crib. Because he just knows where it is at all times. A prime example. He's watching the quarterback's eyes. Look at him. Right at the opportune time, he'll jump up and hit the ball. We've seen him make interceptions. Look at that. Shows good leaping ability. Everybody talks about him not being very athletic, but on those runs, when he catches the ball, takes it back for six. That play right there, that's why he was a Walker Camp Defensive Player of the Week last week. Eight tackles today. One for a loss from Moffitt to the outside. That's completed. They were trying for the strip. Mike Jenkins there. Well, he, he really, I mean, he's in the receiver's faces, isn't he? Rob Hausler listed as a tight end. All of their tight ends are about 210, 215 pounds. Hausler out of Converse, Texas, Converse Judson High School outside of San Antonio. One of the few kids from outside the state of Florida. Two Texas kids, if I'm not mistaken. One from Elkins, which is down in Fort Bend County, and this kid out of Converse, Texas. Another third down. Must situation for FAU if they want to stay in this game. And it is a first down. Jason Harmon on the receiving end. The mark will be past the first down, even though he got pushed about 10 yards back. Jerome Murphy and a cast of others were trying to make sure he was down. Harmon's had an outstanding game today. Well, undersized tight end, but good ability. Did a great catch. Tucked away, Jerome Murphy riding his back, Moffitt trying to come and hit him, Tyrone McKenzie, and what are all of them doing? Going for the strip. Trying to feed on that. Football. Smith has thrown 40 passes today. He's completed 20. Over the middle. Wide open. It's gone. In for a touchdown, FAU. for the celebration in the end zone. 47 yards, Smith the edge go. Well, they've done a good job of moving away from George Selby and then going back with the pro that way. Bruce Montpete Premier was covering him. It can't stay up. You can't have a, a running back on a linebacker. That's a mismatch. You can see how it develops. They move away from Selby and then go right back to him with the throw. Great job by Edgecombe. And then he does a little flip over, which 15 yards is given away right there on the kickoff. Yeah, that was a big penalty. You don't think yeah. of it right now. FAU fans are celebrating, but they're going to be kicking from the 15-yard line. And that gives... South Florida a chance for a nice return. But FAU now is going to go for two. They can make this a three-point ball game if they convert. Well, that but, was just a simple nine-play 80-yard drive. <laughs> but that was a nice setup. They've gone away from George Selby, working to the right, and he's on the left side. 
Gary Nord, offensive coordinator, longtime coordinator for Howard Schnellenberger in Louisville. Now at FAU, going for two, Buck. Well, it makes sense right here. You get this score, you make it a three-point ball game, and the way the FAU has played, they're clearly wanting to win this game at home here. Rusty Smith trying to pull the FAU Owls within a field goal. Edgecombe lines up in the backfield along with Charles Pierre. Look for Jason Harmon, number 88. Batter down. Terrific defensive play by Mike Jenkins. So that gives South Florida a little breathing room, 28-23. But still an eternity on the clock, 641. The Owls of FAU. Who are we? We're playing right along with the sixth ranked team in the country. That's who. ESPNU College Football presented by Allstate. Are you in good hands? Rusty Smith has had some sure handed receivers. As the sun begins to set here in Fort Lauderdale, that's out towards the beach. And South Florida comes in sixth in the country. Howard Schnellenberger hoping for a huge upset. Still time. Doug, I'm, I'm never ceased to be amazed by what job he's been able to do down in Miami and then Louisville and now here. And think about the counties. He used to call them the state of Miami. Broward, Dade, Palm Beach, all of those areas. Now he says that's their recruiting zone. They're able to go there as well as Orange and St. Lucia. And that's where he said they have been very good at finding all the talent in this area, down in the bottom, those bottom counties of Florida. Ryan Peros will now kick off. And he kicks from the 15-yard line. After that penalty, the celebration penalty. Gives it all he has, but he's against an 18-mile-an-hour win. They field it at the 30. Jerome Murphy. And Murphy scampers up to the 45-yard line. We talked about Coach Schnellenberger, and he's remembered down in South Florida. Bernie Kozak, Miami. They lost their first game and then reeled off 11 straight and took on Nebraska. Jeff Smith went in for the touchdown. 48 seconds to go. Tom Osborne decides to go for two. Instead of the tie, they would have gotten the national title probably with the tie. Incomplete. And that started the Miami dynasty. Howard Schnellenberger. Didn't have white hair then. <laughs> I can remember in my living room just going crazy after Miami won that. I was cheering for him. Couldn't believe they pulled that off. South Florida stays on the ground. Let's check in with the studio. And that is at Clemson. Oh, the Boo Birds are out in South Carolina. Grothy throws it up and out of bounds. And Buck, you and I talked to Jim Levitt this week, and you asked him the question. You said, Coach, what's it like now being the hunted instead of the hunter? <laughs> First time ever. Yeah. We're seeing what's happening today. Well, you're getting a chance to see what your, your guys are going to do. I mean, you, you, how they respond. And it was 7-7 at halftime. Jim Levitt's crew has come out and just run right at FAU. But the Owls have hung in there. It has been a terrific Saturday in South Florida. Biggest crowd to ever see a home game in this stadium in FAU's history. That ball was deflected. They're going to get the ball back. And Andre Clark, another one of those outstanding linebackers. I love the, the enthusiasm that the sideline for Florida Atlantic has. It's been a change of tempo over here as opposed to South Florida. They're a little bit more subdued. They haven't had a chance to make opportunities happen. This is Andre Clark with a nice play. Tulane and Army coming up next right here on ESPNU. And we have lots of time remaining. The punt by Alvarado. They went after it, but he got it away. Wind at his back. Tavius Polo fields it at the nine. And goes down immediately. Flag down on the play. 45-yard punt. That'll be a block in the back or a possible face mask, but I think it's going to be a block in the yeah, back. About block in the back. Now, Polo could have that. He probably let that go. You know, that's one of those ones where you get down there. You, you got to, if they beat you with the coffin kick, you just have to accept it. But usually you put your heels on the 10 and call the fair catch. Yeah, a little block the in the back, off. number 59 on the return team. That'll be half the distance, first down. 
Michael Lockley. Right, right up in your screen, right there. Right in front of Polo. That's what compounds yeah. it right there. If you don't catch that ball on inside the 10, you might give it up for two or three, but still, they <laughs> down at the four yard line. What about this, Buck? Look at those total yards. Doug, when I watched them, I, I thought that when they played against Minnesota, they came out with a certain fire. When they played Kentucky, Kentucky got on them quick and kind of put it away. I said, man, they could play with the high caliber team. They did it with a Big Ten team, and they struggled against Kentucky, but it gave them a chance to kind of see and feel what it would be like playing against South Florida. From the four-yard line, from his own end zone, Smith throws up into double coverage. And again, Jason Harmon, a nice job keeping that from being intercepted. Nate Allen was there, so was Jenkins. That was dangerous. I like that call, though. I mean, you're backed up in your own end zone. Your quarterback has been making some nice throws. The only problem with it is you're throwing it into the wind. You get it up high. Good job there by Jason Harmon of knocking it down, becoming a defender. Second down and 10. The biggest crowd before today was the 1AA semifinals five years ago against Colgate, over 14,000 here. Today, over 20,000. Back to the ground, keeping those legs pumping. Charles Pierre. Hey, speaking of Minnesota, Buck, here it was. This was a Dolphin Stadium, by the way. And Minnesota didn't know what to think of Mr. Polo. Had three interceptions on that game, and then Charles Pierre with the touchdown. This offense just came out firing on all cylinders. Pacherio Johnson. And then Polo again. He shows outstanding ability to go get the ball at his highest point. That was the biggest win in their history, according to Howard Schnellenberger. Obviously, today would topple that. 463 yards for Rusty Smith. Ball start, 73 on the offense. Penalty be half the distance, still third down. The Kevin Miller. Gary Nord looking on. Smith getting the signal from the sidelines. Darrell Jackson, the wide receiver coach, mm -hmm. sending it in. I thought that was it. We talked to Daryl before the game. Yeah. He said, how do you like it? He goes, I love my, I love my boss. <laughs> that was a great line. I love my boss. Howard Schnellenberger, third and 10. The pressure will come on Smith. Rose, the fullback, gets it out to the seven. They'll have to kick away. And that was a smart call. There's still lots of time, and they had their timeouts. Good defensive stand by South Florida. There's a flag on the play. Let's listen for the call. Sideline warning against the South Florida bench. All right, so South Florida backs up a bit. <laughs> I, was, I mean, this is a tense game. Yeah. <laughs> everybody, the fans, everybody is on the sidelines. I saw that there was a flag. I was like, what happened? I didn't see anything on the field. I was, <laughs> what's going on? Jim Levitt. It was interesting. He said he spoke to Lavelle Edwards. A Hall of Fame coach of BYU fame, and Edwards had many offers to leave BYU. And as he told Jim Levitt, Jim, I had a lot of offers, but none ever compared to being at home. <laughs> and that's the same with Jim Levitt. He's a homeboy. He loves it in Tampa. Oh, that was a terrible kick. Off the side of the foot. Keegan Peterson flagged down on the play. A 23-yard kick. That just sounded bad. Yeah, their kicking game today is really hurt them. Keep Cost in mind, them nine points. This was three Dead field ball. goals early. Personal foul for 52 on South Florida. Kennedy 15 yards, first down. All right, let's check in with the studio. And they're down 28-21, Doug. Well, Jim Levitt found the man who was called for the personal foul. I mean, uh, it gets in his face and he hugs him. <laughs> you, don't, you don't mess around with Jim Levin, do you? Tough love right there. <laughs> First and 10. 
from the 44 back to Benjamin Williams. Let's watch this uh, one more time, this exchange. There's 11, where is he, where is he? Yep, there he is. And he tried to move away from him. He tried to turn around and get away. Lucas Dar, <laughs> freshman out of Clearwater, Florida. Oh, man. That, that's a classic, Dad. I didn't do it. No! <laughs> Thank you for resetting the play clock. Well, they've had so many problems with this play clock today. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's Dar. Jim Levitt, you know, you see him on the sidelines. You saw that exchange. And we saw him before the game. He was so wound up. I mean, he's doing wind sprints across the field. But when you get him in a setting, when it's not a tense moment in a game or getting ready for a game, he really is a charming guy. Well, that's why he's been able to recruit so many good athletes there. And even after guys leave and they don't come to his school, so many of them end up coming back home like he did. Williams back on the ground. FAU going for the strip, and Williams just keeps going. He's having his career game. A terrific afternoon for Benjamin Williams, now 158 yards. We're live in Fort Lauderdale, South Florida, Lockhart Stadium. It's been a special place here in Fort Lauderdale for many years. Doug Bell, Charles Arbeckle, Melissa Knowles. Coming up next, Tulane against Army. Dave Armstrong and Coach Gottfried will have that call. Time out. Are you going to work tomorrow? South Florida. South Florida will talk it over. Half. You know, Jim Levitt, years ago. This will be a 30 Really not too long out. ago. Before Alabama hired Mike Shula, after Mike Price left, and even before Mike Price was hired, Alabama flirted with Jim Levitt, interviewed him, and really wanted to hire him. And it resulted really in a contract extension and a lucrative deal for Levitt. But I'm not sure he ever was going to leave at all because he loves <laughs> South Florida so much. I agree with you. That's what's coming up for South Florida. They get a week off. Or actually, it's Central Florida next week. That can get and any then, easier. And then at Rutgers and then at UConn. Well, in that Central Florida game, that's going to be a tough one. <laughs> think about Central Florida and how they've improved their program. They were down for a while, have their stadium at home now. They got the fans behind them. Please reset the that home game mark. at Tampa Stadium against West Virginia yeah. was the sellout, 67,000. Yeah. And now they're extending the student section because so many students are now starting to come to the games from 14,000 to around 18,000. Boy, special things are happening in Tampa. Third down and three. Grunke. Of Amari Jackson. Corey Small has had a good game today. That was a nice play by him. He was cover he's showing he's got some cover ability also. Had an interception earlier. He was draped on Amari Jackson. It looked like he was a, a new suit. All right, let's the see. Navy what, variety. Let's <laughs> see what happens here, Buck, because to Tavius Polo, if that ball comes down anywhere inside the 10, you got to let it go to the yeah, end zone. You have to let it go to the end zone. Or what, let it, let whatever happens, going to happen. That unusual alignment on punt protection for South Florida. Just a little pooch punt, and it bounced. Oh, great save. Did they keep it in play? The call was a touchback. Did not see the initial call, but it was a touchback. Boy, two yeah. terrific attempts at keeping it in play. Polo did the right thing there. Comes to the other side. Only one man over on the other side. Hess trying to get that ball in. It, the first effort was great. The second guy. Oh, that was that close. That's will be reviewed. Yeah, they have to review that. That ball never crossed the plane. Hess does. Hess does a great job of body control and not going over. I thought he took the ball over. He kept it out. But did South Florida ever come and actually down it, or did the official pick up the football? See, that's clean. And then this is clean. Right before he falls, and the ball just stays right there. Now, he can't cannot, he cannot come back from the end zone to down it. It has to be somebody else.
Jason Fox is number 40. I'm not sure anybody for South Florida ever came up and actually touched it. No, I don't. I think the official just blew it dead in that case. Uh, I'm not sure that's a reviewable play, but we'll soon find out. Because if it goes South Florida's way, FAE will have to go 99 yards. Actually, 99 and a half, because that was real close to the goal line. It was right on the, on the end line. The aftermath of that play was interesting because the official on the spot never signaled well, touchback. And, and he also never signaled that the guy could, they never signaled anything. Right. Then they did touchback after the fact. Fox was the second man in. Now he cannot come back and touch it, so he, he didn't Hess, there. Yeah, Hess South Florida did, did touch it. Yeah, Hess never he came, he didn't come back and touch it. He, he walked off. Right now, FAU and Howard Schnellenberg are hoping that they get the ball to 20. Yeah, the first two guys that had touches on it ended up going in the end zone. They never came back to the ball. Talking it over, and let's one more look. Clearly, that's very definitive. Great angle here. That's clean. Has one foot in watch, the field of play. Watch Fox. Oh, they're trying to determine if his shoulder is down. That's what the delay is. His feet were clearly in front of the goal line, but was his shoulder in the end zone? That's what the delay is. They're trying okay. to stop it. They're working with our truck. And trying to get that replay stopped to see if his left shoulder was in the end zone. Now watch his left shoulder. Fox comes in and was his left shoulder After down. Review, the ruling on the field stands. It's a touchback. All right, so his left shoulder, they say, was down in the end zone. I think that last angle showed that. So we still have lots of time, Buck. 226. Well, if you're Florida Atlantic, you got to breathe. Woo, thank you. <laughs> That'd have been hard, 99 yeah. and a half. Coming up next, Tulane and Army. Dave Armstrong. And Coach Godfrey will have the call. Rusty Smith over the middle. Incomplete. Too high. I know Jason Harmon has hops, but he had to be 6'13 to come up with that one. <laughs> Nate Allen almost had a shot at it. Harmon does have some hops. Well, and this is the area of the field also, mind you, where the wind is blowing into the face of the quarterback. So just imagine how strong his arm is to still get that ball out. The only problem is when it carries, it just kind of takes off. One of those high, high fastball pitches that can't get it down in the strike zone. Looks like USF's still in their base. They're not playing back, are they? No. They're going to play with what they have. Smith connects that time with Harmon. I'm not sure he got back to the line of scrimmage. Okay, he did. Gain of three before he was thrown backwards. He's had a huge game today. Moffitt right there to clean it up. Moffitt is just a quality football player. And you can say all you want about, oh, he's not that fast. And Big in reality, he's a 4'6". He's 250 pounds. Very smart. Jenkins. And that that's what Wally Burnham was telling us. That's you know, what he gives you. He makes mistakes, but at that closing speed, he, speed he recovered. Up. Yeah, him and Trey Williams, their technique isn't always perfect, but they have the ability to come back and make a play. And, you know, he, he has that swagger like a corner. Watch this play. He's beat a little bit there, but then he just stays with the receiver and goes up and knocks it away. Well, this could be the ball game. Fourth down and nine. FAU has to keep the chains moving. Smith from the shotgun. His 46th pass attempt of the day. Over the middle. Incomplete. Flag down to the play. Let's check the flag at the line of scrimmage. That play has been there all game for them. That goes against FAU, illegal procedure. Yep. 
in a legal formation on the offense. That penalty's declined. First down, South Florida. South Florida takes over. George Selby, early in this game, he picked up his 10 and a half sack of the season. <laughs> Compared to some teams in the country, he's doing pretty good. More than 77 of 119 teams he has, he's beating. That's unbelievable. I mean, ten and a half sacks. Some people don't have that for a four-year career. No, no. And he has that in five games. We talked about his first step. They neutralized him today by going away from him with the rush. I mean, with how they would play action and boot away from him today. Staying to the ground, Benjamin Williams continues to just pad his numbers. Pick up of eight. Jelaine and Army coming up next, Buck. Doug, we talked about, you know, South Florida and where they stood and how they would be. I wonder how they're going to rank this week after playing Florida Atlantic. Florida Atlantic, you don't want to give them a moral victory, but golly, they played well today. Williams again puts his head down. That's his 24th carry of the day. Another first down for South Florida. Doug, both of these teams have left it on the field. You can see with guys, I mean, at this point, there's going to be a lot of handshaking and hugging after this game. Like a family member after you beat each other in a game of checkers or whatever, you go and shake that hand. Coach Schnellenberger, when they were starting this program at FAU, he goes over to Tampa and spends four days with Coach Levitt and his staff. And as Coach Levitt said, he knows all about X's and O's. He just wanted to find out about the politics. He said he spent a lot of time with Leroy Selman also. Selman could walk in anywhere in Tampa and get him in the door, and get an understanding of how to do it. Another touchdown for Benjamin Williams, his fourth of the day. What a game for that young man. What a game. I can't oh. say enough about a former walk-on who had to work and work and work to get a scholarship. So you talk about second and third effort. This guy understands what hard work is. If you're a young kid at college or high school thinking about where you're going to go to college, doesn't matter where you start. It's how you finish, like Ben Williams. All right, Buck, how about these numbers? 25 carries, 185, and four touchdowns. You know, you can never measure a man's heart. And I'm going to tell you, he's not a big guy, but he's played with an awful huge heart today. 35-23, South Florida will remain unbeaten. Number five, Wisconsin, loses at Illinois. Did the Bulls move up a notch? You know, I don't know. With the way they played this game today, some voters may not vote them as high. They wanted to see a bigger score against the team Florida Atlantic, who got blown out last week by Kentucky. A good win for South Florida to come in and figure out a way to win in a tough environment. For the, for the pollsters, they're going to look at it just strictly in numbers. And the way this team has performed, Florida Atlantic has the last few times they've played in these type of matchups. Williams entered the game with five career touchdowns, and he has four to death. Wow. He, is, uh, he has put on a serious show. And look at the fans. I mean, they feel it, they sense it, they look at that schedule as fans do, coaches don't, players don't. They're saying, you know, we could be undefeated. We could play in the yeah. national championship game. I don't know, that's interesting. That's a debate that that's will a, rage if they remain undefeated. That's a undefeated. big stretch. The one thing, too, about Williams, the reason why he got so, so many opportunities, Mike Ford fumbled last week, so he didn't play, and Jamar Taylor was hurt earlier in today's game. From the end zone, Edgecombe brings it out. Gets it up to the 30. You know, you think back to Boise State last year. Yeah. They had a ceiling. They could only go so high even though they were undefeated. Well, and this week will hurt them if, if it goes to show they stay undefeated because if they don't move any significant spots, this is the area where you would think if they showed a 25-point win or something like that, that would have given them a better chance with Wisconsin losing the day. I just don't know how much they're going to move up, even with some of the teams in front of them having struggles today. Tulane and Army is coming up next. Black Knights have been solid this season. Tulane for a half gave LSU all they could handle last week. Rusty Smith, 22 of 46 on the day for 248. Another completion. Little give and go, Edgecombe. 
first down for FAU. Oh, hook and ladder play. Doug, this is just a no-win situation for South Florida, really. If you win significantly, people say you should beat Florida Atlantic. If you come in and you struggle like they have with the team who's fighting to the end, no hook and ladder play made successful by the Miami Dolphins. Coach Schnellenberger will shake the hand of Jim Levitt. You're right. FAU gave them everything they could handle. <laughs> On the day, Grothy and Williams combined for 39 carries, 306 yards, five touchdowns. Jim Levitt and the USF Bulls remain undefeated. Well, it was a good win for them, and they found a way to pull it out at the end. The final score again from Lockhart Stadium in Fort Lauderdale, USF 35, FAU 23. For more information, log on. You're home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Charles Arbuckle, Melissa Knowles, our entire ESPN crew, and what a crew they are. I'm Doug Bell. We'll say so long for Fort Lauderdale. Let's join Dave Armstrong and Mike Godfrey, Tulane and Army, coming up next.